sunny surprise Arizona the scene for Rangers baseball today with familiar faces in the opposing dugout as they take on WBC team Venezuela. What a beautiful day here in Surprise, Arizona. Getting ready, and that's, that is how you prepare. Venezuela and the Texas Rangers here at Surprise Stadium. A, a WBC warm-up for Venezuela, and just another spring exhibition for the Rangers. Great to be with you. I'm Dave Raymond with CJ Nikowski. Uh, the WBC having a, a profound effect on spring training for a lot of teams, CJ, but for the Rangers, uh, they're one of the, the teams that really feels it the most. Without a doubt, this is what happens when you send eight players from your big league camp, one more from your minor league camp into the WBC. Now, Jeff Bannister, the manager, has talked about how uh, this has made his camp kind of uh, in three different sections part of it, and part of that is getting these WBC guys ready to participate in that tournament. The other thing that's so interesting about this for me is that we're going to see teammates competing against each other in spring training, and for them it's actually going to matter. Not just this game, but throughout the WBC, going at it with your own teammates, against your own teammates, always a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, we always talk about the, the, the competition in camp for jobs. Well, they're competing against one another today for a win. What a way to enjoy baseball, young and old alike, in the sunshine in Arizona. We've got the starting lineup, the first pitch, coming up next. See 77 degrees, just a beautiful day today. Rangers and Team Venezuela getting set to go. And down on the field with our first report today, we check in with Emily Jones. Yeah, a gorgeous day for baseball. Should be a great day. game on tap here this afternoon. Some not so good news, however, from the Rangers camp. As for the second time in spring training, Andrew Kashner has been shut down due to a setback, this time with that upper right bicep. He's been experiencing experiencing some soreness there throughout camp. Uh, had a setback here recently, and they, they decided to shut him down uh, for a couple of days. Really no timetable on his return. This 
does make uh, him being ready for opening day very much in question. And so it makes the start by Chichi Gonzalez even more important because rather than, you know, four or five guys fighting for just that fifth rotation spot to start the season, at least that fourth spot could be open as well. So keep your eyes out on Chichi and the rest of the guys as they progress throughout this camp to see who kind of asserts themselves and takes a hold of that fifth spot and perhaps even the fourth spot to open the season, guys. Yeah, thanks, Emily. And that was the big news this morning here around camp as we take a look at the starting lineup today for Team Venezuela as they get ready for the WBC. Ander Inciarte in center field leading it off, Odubel Herrera, Miguel Cabrera, Carlos Gonzalez, and then Rubnet Odor at second base right there in the heart of the order. Martin Prado at third base, Renan Perez at first, Robinson Chirinos catching, and then Alcides Escobar, the shortstop, rounding it out for Venezuela. Yeah, you think about that lineup going to be very difficult here for Chichi Gonzalez, a guy who is absolutely competing right now to try to get into this opening day rotation. And have a pretty tough task today against Team Venezuela. Well, very, very good test for him, too. When you talk about trying to simulate you know, regular season intensity down here in Arizona, you can't do a whole lot better than this. And he gets us started with strike one this afternoon. And look for that today as a very important part of his game. Jeff Bannister talked about it before this one started. We have sure Chi Chief Gonzalez talking about it after his last start, getting ahead of guys. It was been an issue for him. Uh, this is something that he's got to be able to address, getting ahead, being able to work ahead. Uh, he is much more successful. We say that about all pitchers, but it's specifically important to Chi Chi Gonzalez as he goes through this competition. Now it gets Enciarte to foul one off and make the count of ball and two strikes. Chi Chi just turned 25 years old. Former first round selection back in the 2013 draft. Last year, appeared in only three games with the Rangers. And this one hit sharply on the ground, but right to second base. And on top of it, Bernier, one away. Nicely done by Chi Chi. Take a look at the defense behind him today. Joey Gallo getting the start at third. Hanser Alberto at short. Doug Bernier, second base, and Mike Napoli at first. Rua Gomez and Nomar Mazzara in the outfield. And behind the plate today, Brett Hayes. So he will form the battery with Chichi Gonzalez. Right Anders first offering this one a little wide to Odubo Herrera. And the other component to what Jeff Bannister wants to see today, not only getting ahead, but the ability to keep the ball on the ground. They know that is Chi-Chi Gonzalez's game. They know that he is most successful when he is inducing ground balls, and that's something to keep an eye on as well today, again, as he continues to try to make his mark here in spring training. See the numbers last year for Herrera, 15 home runs and 49 RBIs. And what a, what a great one he has been for the Phillies in their rebuild. Two and one the count. I mentioned Chi Chi last year with just the three starts with the Rangers in 2015, just a couple of years into his pro career, made 10 starts, four relief appearances, and had an ERA sub four. And I think there were high expectations last year for Chi Chi as a result. One buried, and it's three and one. You mentioned Herrera and the year that he had and how good he has been since he's been in Philadelphia. They rewarded that. This past offseason signed him to a five-year contract, $30.5 million for one of those team-friendly deals. Go ahead and lock him up. Only got two years of service time. He's four years away from free agency. Yeah, a little roller to second base. And handled cleanly again by Bernier. And so that's two ground ball outs for Chichi Gonzalez to get us started this afternoon. And that's a nice sign. It'll bring up now Miguel Cabrera. So you go from somebody like Rodubel Herrera, who's this really promising and rapidly ascending star for the Phillies, to now very much the veteran and accomplished designated hitter today, Miguel Cabrera. And he'll swing at the first pitch. Well, Doug Bernier. It's like he will tie a record held by many as he handles all three outs, and it's a one-two-three for Chi Chi Gonzalez. Excellent start this afternoon for Gonzalez. Rangers coming to bat.
First for Chi Chi Gonzalez, and now the Rangers will take their hacks. We take a look at their starting lineup today. Two nine and one so far this spring. Carlos Gomez in center field leading it off. Then it's Shinsu Chu, Nomar Mazara, Mike Napoli, and then Joey Gallo at third base batting fifth today. Kind of the heart of the order there. Ryan Rua, Brett Hayes, Doug Bernier at second base, and then Hanser Alberto. A shortstop will round things out today for the Rangers. And you mentioned it too as far as what's happening here with the WBC and really affecting that Texas Rangers lineup. One through four, yeah, you're going to see those guys in Arlington. But after that, uh, a lot of spots right now that are vacated because so many players are at the WBC. Gomez, right-handed hitter, four hits and 15 at-bats so far this spring as we take a look at Wilfredo Ledesma. See the nine years spent in the big leagues, taking advantage of being left-handed like so many of us have. <laughs> that one on the corner. Evens accounted one and one. It is a it's a great skill, man. It's one of the most valuable you could come up with. So Gene Guidi, longtime writer in Detroit, once said, said to me, while I was in the midst of a bad year, he's like, being left-handed is like having a license to steal in baseball. He's kind of right. Gomez lifts a lazy fly ball out to right field. One away. Play made there by Carlos Gonzalez of the Rockies. We take a look at the rest of the Venezuela defense today. Odubel Herrera in the left. And Ciarte in center along with Gonzalez in right. It's Martin Prado third. Alcides Escobar at short. Rugi gets the start at second base today. Hernan Perez at first. And Robinson Chirinos does the catch of this afternoon for Ledesma. That is a solid outfield. Herrera is usually a center fielder. Anytime you can take a center fielder and move him to a corner position because you have an even superior defender in Inserte, you know that they're going to be covering a lot of ground in this WBC. Of course, Cargo out and right is a really good defender as well with the plus arm. There's only three outfielders listed on that roster right now for Team Venezuela, but they're three pretty good ones. Shinsu Chu, two for 12 so far this spring. Acting as the DH this afternoon. One of his two hits, an extra base hit. You see the numbers last year, seven homers, 17 RBIs in surprisingly uh, little time last year. Four trips to the disabled list, really uh, a bugaboo last year for Chu. But man, when he was in there, he was excellent. And of course, you think of the run he made at the end of the 2015 season. For the Rangers, his at bat, oh, or his bat, rather a big one. As that one came way in tight, did it get him? Sure looked like it. Mm. Take another look. Well, he tried to bunt this ball and he got out of the way. Now the, I think the question is whether or not the ball actually hit him. He's saying it hit his hand. Yeah, when he held up his index finger, I thought, what's he doing? It was that's where it hit him. Yeah. It hit him on the index finger. And I'll tell you what, all things considered, the way that one was coming in on him, when a guy squares the butt like that, that's mm -hmm. that's scary. It absolutely is. And you think about it, at that point, now you're squared up to the pitcher, ball coming right at your head. You're not going to have the same reaction time. You're anticipating looking for a ball out over the middle of the plate to be able to bunt. So you see Shin Chu Chu put his hand up almost as if he's trying to block that ball from hitting him in the head. But he got up right away, ended up not being anything too serious. So, Chu aboard. And now, Nomar Mazzara. Nomar, four for 17 with a home run. Those guys just trying to get comfortable back in the box again and get into a rhythm. The, the offensive numbers for the Rangers, candidly, have not been good. And it's up and down the board. But the offensive numbers last year for Nomar Mazzara were outstanding. Rookie season, 20 home runs. Ended at that 266 mark. It's 2 0 here. Ledesma well, last pitched in the big leagues back in 2010 in Toronto, excuse me, 2011 in Toronto. And he's been in Mexico the last couple of years, so he's not been in affiliated baseball in a while. Well, he deals with two at first and is pitched to Mazzara up and away. Did you play with Ledesma by any chance? He played for 
half of Major League Baseball, as did you? <laughs> Shockingly, no, we did not cross paths. He also was in Japan for a couple of years, yeah. previous to the two that he spent in Mexico. But no, we did not uh, did not cross paths. Ledesma well, with the, the Braves, uh, the Tigers, two of your teams, Padres, Arizona, the Nationals, Pirates, the Blue Jays. And he walks Mazzara, so he nearly hit Chu. Comes back and misses on four straight to Mazzara. And opens up a little opportunity in his first inning for the Rangers. I'll tell you this, sometimes after you throw one up and in, almost hit a guy in the head like he did to Shin Chu Chu, maybe feeling a little bit tentative as well, especially this is a, a tune-up, right? This is just kind of a friendly match, guys getting ready for the season. And it looked like we saw Will Ledesma get just a little bit tentative after that pitch that he threw up and in toward Shin Chu Chu, but he's put himself in a pretty tough spot. And you got Mike Napoli now sitting here looking to hunt a fastball and do some damage in the first inning. Well, and as I mentioned just a moment ago, how the offensive numbers haven't been real good for the Rangers. Maybe the one guy who's had some legitimate success so far has been Napoli. Five for 16, a double, a homer. And that's five in a row missed now by Ledesma. See, last year with Cleveland, a career year for home runs for Napoli and eclipsed the 100 mark in RBIs. There's a good breaking ball for a strike. It sounds like we'll see a pretty steady stream of pitchers coming out of that bullpen today for Venezuela. Just a tune-up. They start in a couple of days in the WBC. I don't think we're going to see Will Ledesma necessarily going very deep in this game. As, as we understand it, the plan is to run nine different relievers through the game. Now, that's everybody goes in with a plan. <laughs> that's right. But if, if Ledesma has trouble getting outs here, that, that you know, we may see a, an adjustment. Chu is at second, Mazzara at first for the Rangers. And that's a little tight. So, a three and one count for Napoli. This is a right-handed power hitter's dream against the lefty, especially Will Ledesma. Not an overpowering fastball. You get to pick one spot, look for it. And if that pitch is there, Mike Napoli will let it fly. Well, they wait deep in the outfield, the 3-1. And that ball is hit into left field, but not well. Coming on for Herrera, and they're two away. Took a big swing, but just missed. Might have even broken the bat. That one got in on him a little bit. That might have had to do with taking a bigger swing and eyes lighting up in that 3-1 count. But somehow that ball got in on Mike Napoli. Just missed it. So he squares that one up. You can tell by the trajectory. If he got that on the barrel, we would have been looking at a 3 nothing ball game. Yep. Hi, Joy. Oh, didn't get cheated on that swing. And now a guy who never gets cheated on his swings, Joey Gallo. And he has a home run this spring. Two for 20 so far at the plate. And as we saw last year with his numbers in the minor leagues, you know, his walk rate has increased. You see the power was still there last year with Round Rock. The strikeouts are probably never going to disappear, and that's okay. I, I think everybody can live with the strikeouts. The on base can get up. That power remains. A lot of promise in that bat. And it's one and one. And that's the trend in baseball. We've seen it. Organizations are okay with strikeouts. They're not going to ask guys to completely change their game, especially when you have the level of power that Joey Gallo has. But there is a number in there somewhere. We'd like to see it cut down a little bit. And listen, it takes a while when you have that kind of power, that kind of swing, that kind of swing and miss in your game. It takes a little while to get comfortable at the big league level. That one groove for a strike, and it's one and two to Gallo. Now, the frustration last year for Gallo was, you know, people look at the numbers for the time he was up with a big club. But he played in 25 games, or rather uh, 17 games, only got 25 at bats. Well, that's real tough. Mm -hmm. You talk about making an adjustment to the big league level, that's one thing. Doing it in limited sporadic at bats is that much more difficult. The one two. And we'll be square at two balls and two strikes. Now you're absolutely right. And whenever you come through an organization that is competitive the way that the Rangers are and they expect to win, 
you're not going to get the extra time. There's somewhat of an advantage sometimes when you're a prospect and you're coming through an organization that's not competitive. You're doing it right now through, you know, say the San Diego Padres system. There's going to be more patience for you. There's going to be more at-bats for you at the big league level. But when the team is trying to contend, uh, that window of opportunity can be a lot shorter, can bring some added pressure. It is certainly not an easy thing uh, to try to break in on a competitive ball club. 2-2 two -two to Gallo, and he watches strike three. So the Rangers got a couple of free brace runners, but leave them both out there. Scoreless after one as we send it back to the studios with John Radigan and Chuck Morgan. Team Venezuela, I'm CJ Nikowski, along with Dave Raymond. And fans, a full or half-season ticket plan means you'll never miss out on any of the action in 2017. Lock in the best per ticket prices, the best benefits, and the best seating locations. Visit TexasRangers.com slash seasons to get your season ticket plan today. Nicely done. You know, that's the first step. I don't want to say <laughs> the most important, but the first step to your play-by-play, -play, which is coming up this weekend. I can't wait. Reading out loud. Did I forget to say that? I didn't say the loud. score, though, did I? No score. Did I say no score? Well, so that's just it, though. If there is no score, then you technically, you, you nailed it. That's a good point. There was no score. There was no score. High fly ball. Deep right field. And that one is gone. Cargo with a solo shot to lead off the second inning for Team Venezuela. One nothing on a no doubter by a guy who's hit a few in his career with the Colorado Rockies. This guy's been a great player now for a long time, and he got a no one pitch. Probably located a little bit too good over the place. He's trying to go down and in a dangerous spot for a lefty. This one ends up being out over the plate. And he absolutely crushed this ball, as you'll see it land just to the left of that Four Peaks Pavilion, just over that bomb cargo. So, a terrific first inning for Chi Chi. But then it didn't take long for Venezuela to get after him in inning number two. They lead 1 0. Rubnet Odor takes a strike. And now the count 1 and 1 after that one. A little tall on Rugi. What a year last year for Rugnet Odor. 33 home runs. That led the, the club. 88 RBIs. And he smacks it up the middle, a base hit for Odor. Well, coming in, CJ, you knew this game. And again, if spring training games aren't exhibition enough, this is, like, way more of an exhibition than those. And but you, you knew this lineup was going to hit. Without a doubt. It's going to be a problem for anybody facing Team Venezuela, Team Dominican as well. A really strong lineup but for Chi Chi Gonzalez. It goes from you know, kind of the mundane feeling that you have in spring training. Be a couple of big league hitters there, but mostly minor league guys. Uh, to all of a sudden now, not only facing 
a big league lineup or something close to it, but a very, very good uh, big league lineup. And Rudin Odor right there was very comfortable. That pitch was away. It wasn't poorly located, but you could tell he was looking for something out over the plate uh, and trying to drive it to the middle of the field. He was all over that pitch. And, and back to back left handed hitters now scoring up Chi Chi Gonzalez. Martin Prado, and he gets a healthy swing. That one hit well out to left. Will it have enough carry? Not quite. Off the fence. Odor headed to third. He'll drop anchor there on the double by Martin Prado. Boy, some big swings in the second inning for Venezuela. Yeah, comfortable swings. And you know, a lot of times, first time through the lineup, you're trying to use your fastball, not show all of your repertoire. We talked about Chichi Gonzalez wanting to get ahead. That's what he wants to show. Jeff Bannister keeping the ball on the ground. But it has been a case all of a sudden now of getting some balls up as we see Martin Prado well balanced and getting a great swing on that pitch. And so now for Chichi, going to get back down in the zone. Don't be surprised if you may see him start to use his off speed stuff a little bit earlier after some good swings on the fastball. Hernan Perez now the hitter. So now a real stiff challenge here for Gonzalez. I see Perez's numbers last year with the Milwaukee Brewers. Mike Napoli up tight at first base. Everybody else back at regular depth on the infield. And it's one and one on Perez. Perez originally signed by the Tigers back in 2007, and he was one of their top prospects. Well, this goes back a couple of years, one of their top 10, 15 prospects as he falls behind at one and two. Now watch Ruggie right there. He's got to watch. He's got to make sure that this ball is going to get down once he realizes it's going to be over the left fielder's head. Able to take off. Does a nice job of that. He's thinking at it. He knows he's going to get to third, but as he comes hard around second, picking up his third base coach and wondering if they're going to take a chance and send him home. They decided not to. But a good turn and good base running by Odor. Oh, good fastball. Just good missed. Job, and the count two and two on Perez. Nobody out in the inning. It was a home run by Gonzalez. Odor with the base hit. Prado with the double and the 2-2. That one is served out to right field, base hit. Odor comes home easily, and Prado will be stopped at third. RBI single by Perez, it's 2-0 Venezuela. Well, one issue I think you look at with Chichi Gonzalez is that he is predominantly four-seam fastball, two-seam fastball, and slider. So somewhere around 75% of his pitches are 85 to 92 miles an hour, right? There's not a, a monster range, and we've seen the slider a little bit today. Now, he does throw uh, a little bit of a slower curveball that'll be 78 to 82, but everything so far, for the most part, has been slider or fastball, both the four and the two seams. So there's not a lot of spread in the differential of those pitches, and I think when you start seeing a good hitting lineup uh, like Team Venezuela right now, that's why I mentioned wondering if we would see uh, maybe the curveball a little bit more. He doesn't use it a lot, but he has said this spring that he may want to start using it first pitch a little bit more to try to get ahead to get guys off of his fastball. We haven't seen that yet today. So then do you assume that a guy is I mean, not as concerned about the results? You know, you want to be successful. You want to get out. But he's really just working on arm strength and stretching out a little bit. I don't think necessarily in the case of Chi-Chi Gonzalez, right? I do think the results matter. And Jeff Bannister and company are smart enough to know that it's not all about the results. They've talked about uh, that a bunch. And you hear the phrase, well, it's about the process. So what are you looking at? Well, today, uh, you know, you're watching the swings and the comfortable swings. Again, against a good lineup, this is the kind of lineup or something close to it that you would see at the big league level. And so it's been hard contact, and, and yes, I think it does matter. I don't think that Chi-Chi's in that spot right now that, say, maybe you Darvish was in earlier in spring, right, where he's working on the split finger, and it doesn't matter what the results are. He's working on something. He can do that. But when you're competing uh, in spring training, you don't really get that luxury of trying to work on stuff. Results do matter. The quality of pitches absolutely matter. The level of contact really matters. Well, Robinson Chirinos takes one down low. It's two and one. To the Ranger backstop, but we just saw Hernan Perez steal second base. He, mm -hmm. he does that to a lot of guys. He stole 34 last year in the big leagues. Is that the type of thing that would be an issue at all 
as well. That you know, I don't know. Chi Chi's losing track of a runner because he's focused on a hitter, or you, do you not care about that when you're Chi Chi in that spot? You just like whatever run. No, you have to care because there's nobody out. And so the idea of another runner getting into scoring position is certainly not ideal uh, right now for him. So, yes, it does matter. I think all of those things matter, especially your backs against the wall. It's only the second inning, and we say it's only a spring training game. But these are all the things uh, when you're being evaluated in spring training uh, that both the guys in the dugout and the guys in the front office are looking at. Well, the killer there, too, is, you know, you, a double play would just be huge mm -hmm. as this inning you know, continues to creep away from him. I mean, that, that can get him back in control a little bit. Happy to give up the run to get the two outs in that spot, but with Perez now at second base, no longer in order. Again, Napoli up on the edge of the grass with runners at second and third and nobody out. Outfield straight away on Chirinos. And this one blooped out toward right, and it drops in for a hit. Prado will score easily. Perez to third. And Chirinos drives in a run against his club. It's 3-0 Venezuela. That's a tough break now for Chichi Gonzalez. And when it rains, it pours. Look at the catcher's glove. Look at the pitch. This ball's down and away. It's a good pitch. It wasn't hit particularly hard. Chirinos does a nice job. It's off the end of the bat. Gets it in the outfield for a base hit. But when you're having these kinds of innings and guys are hitting the ball hard, you're sitting there, the focus, you're trying to, to raise that level, hit your spots, and he does, and then he doesn't get the result that he wants. And this is what can happen uh, in a game like this, and especially against a lineup like this, uh, where the breaks just aren't coming. So that was a tough one there uh, for Chichi Gonzalez. You talk about process and contact, that at bat in particular was successful. I'll take it. Yeah, it's a base hit, but it wasn't a hard hit. It's the other ones, unfortunately, before that, that make that one look worse. Well, it seems to me too in spring training, you just see these these wildly different innings from guys. We saw it the other day in Peoria for A.J. Griffin. He pitched a couple of good innings and given up a, a solo home run, and then he just couldn't get the outs in the third. He ended up with a five-run inning. And here, Chichi was great in the first. But boy, the second inning, home run, single, double, single, single. And he deals with the ninth place hitter, Alcides Escobar, jumps ahead of him. 0-1. Three runs across. Men on the corners. And this one flared out towards center. That gets home another run. Chirinos will head to third. RBI single by Escobar. It's 4-0 Venezuela. What a difference an inning makes. You talked about that first one. Three ground balls to second base. Chichi Gonzalez looked locked in, and now all of a sudden we come out here in this second inning, and Team Venezuela swinging the bats well. That's a pitch that Chichi Gonzalez wants down a little bit lower. You know Escobar is a free swinger. This is not a guy that gets on base a lot, consistently sub 300 on his on base percentage. He's up there to swing, and if you give him a pitch up, he's going to be able to handle it. Well, back to the top of the order now, and it's Yarte who grounded out in the first inning. We'll check in with Alcides Escobar. And Escobar will run. He had 17 stolen bases last year with the Royals. Middle of the infield, a double play depth. And Chichi very alert to Escobar. So a tough start. Rangers have themselves in a bit of a hole. Gonzalez with that long hold. Interesting to me that he's that much more interested in Escobar than he has been with, to this point, any other base runner that has been out there for Venezuela. Oh, you wonder. You mentioned earlier, right, the stolen base and losing the double play possibility when Perez took second, maybe saying, you know, did that slip my mind? Was I not focusing on the runners, and do I need to pay a little bit closer attention? Listen, you have innings like this. Things are going 100 miles an hour. Uh, in your mind is you're going to make some mistakes and part of this game is your ability to be able to conquer that to slow the game down bring yourself into the present give yourself that that deep breath and relax and try to execute a pitch but there are a lot of thoughts right now going through Chichi Gonzalez's head I mentioned earlier still just 25 years old Gonzalez possesses so many of the tools that you know 
know, won covets in this game. 6'3", 210 pounds. Oh, Stuff yeah. is there as this one popped up and well out of play. Maybe the closest we'll ever get to getting a ball up in this house. Yeah, just about. And fans going crazy right now because that ball landed in a suite that is unoccupied. That ball, <laughs> that ball may sit there the rest of the game. <laughs> well, I was bounced right here. I knew you were looking the other way, but it bounced right here, right next to us. Been off the corners. Chichi again with that nice long hold. The two-one pitch. There's his potential. Double play ball. Bernier to second one. Alberto to first. Not in time. Run scores. Inciarte beats it out. 5 nothing Venezuela. But the first out of the inning. Well, you're right. This is exactly what Chichi Gonzalez was trying to get earlier when he had some runners on first base. Good ground ball, but it hit slow enough. Unfortunately, to give Inciarte enough time to get down and be safe. Sometimes you wish some ground balls were hit a little bit harder. But there's nothing else that the Rangers could have done on their turn. It was well executed. Well, that will do it today for Chichi Gonzalez. A short, but in some ways very long afternoon for Chichi as he's surrendered five runs and responsible for the man at first, Jimmy Reyes, from minor league camp coming on to pitch, and we'll tell you about him when we return. Start for Venezuela up five nothing in the second inning only one out the man at first Fox Sports supports proud to team up with National Alliance on mental illness and their commitment to improving the lives of families and those living with mental illness learn more about how to be stigma free and visit Fox Sports supports dot com Jimmy Reyes on here in relief gets a ground ball in the first pitch quick underhand to second one the relay to first won't get there in time Herrera beats it out really fantastic play up the middle by Doug Bernier to to get to that ball and, and make sure he does get it out that was a really good play that very easily could have been a base hit up the middle they even had a chance to turn a double play now he makes the great play when he dives as you watch this here took him a little while to get the ball out of his glove which is completely understandable when you think about the position that he was in but a great attempt to try to turn that. That would have been a fantastic double play. And even Alberto was a nice job on the turn as well. Reyes now dealing to Cabrera. It's right in there with strike one. Miguel Cabrera grounded out of the first inning. 0 for 1 so far this afternoon. Not a fun at bat here for a lefty. <laughs> and especially one uh, that has spent his career so far at the minor league level. And Jimmy Reyes. 5'10", 200 pounds, left-hander. 28 years old from Miami. Last year, spent the year in Round Rock, an 0-2 record, a 4-14 earned run average, and 
41 relief appearances and a couple of starts. And he gets Cabrera to fight one off, so it's one and two. And what a great opportunity for him, right? You come over from Meyer Luke Campus, you see the numbers there and the opportunity with him in Round Rock, Triple uh, A. Not a huge strikeout guy, 51 and 71 innings, but this is a situation where you have everything to gain and nothing to lose, right? You have a good at bat against Miguel Cabrera, and Jeff Bannister sees it. It goes in the back of his mind a little bit. So certainly a nice opportunity here for Jimmy Reyes. Back to the plate, Cabrera. This is best just to see another pitch. Well, Reyes, he's been in the organization for six years. He was a minor league free agent, not signed until very late, right? As we were in spring training. It was originally a seventh round pick by the Rangers back in 2010. Out of Elon University and the one two. Little roller up the middle to his left, Alberto. Backhand flip to second, and the inning is over. So, Jimmy Reyes comes in and throws a little water on the fire. Five runs, second inning for Venezuela. They've opened up the big league. Well, a 5 nothing start for Venezuela this afternoon. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Ryan Rua will lead things off. Player profiles delivered by DeMontron RV. Rua, as many know, from Ohio. He's 27 years old. This will be his fourth big league season. I was talking to him earlier today down in the clubhouse. Grew up watching some great Indians teams. And Omar Vizquel very much... Uh, one of the highlights for him growing up, a guy he watched closely in Cleveland and was a big fan of. I, I asked him if he'd ever met Omar Vizquel. He said, no, never had that opportunity. I said, do you make the effort then on a day like today? Mm -hmm. You got to walk across, say hi, shake the hand, that kind of thing. He said, you know, yeah, I'm try. going over, man. That's fantastic. Never gets old. Right? The guys right. that you grew up idolizing, you have a chance to run across them on a baseball field. Doesn't matter how old you get, they're always your guy, right? The guy that you looked up to uh, as a kid, even though he's moved on to Marvisville, obviously coaching now, managing uh, this team, Venezuela club. You get a chance to see him and meet him. It is still as exciting as a moment as it would have been when he was 10 years old. 1 0 to Rua, and he hammers this ball deep left field and gone. Wow. Hey, Omar, look at me. <laughs> Well, the two home runs that we have seen today, first Carlos Gonzalez and now Rua, that was another absolute bomb. Ryan Rua, that was top of the berm. It was a no-doubter and a loud home run as well. And we thought it was going to be one pitcher per inning for Team Venezuela, but Ledesma is back out there. It's a pitch that ends up, I mean, right over the heart of the plate, fastball, and he just did not miss it. Oh, there you go. Second home run of the spring for Ryan Rua. And now Brett Hayes. Yeah, great day for Rua. One of his childhood idols in the other dugout. Getting to show off a little bit. 
So a 5-1 game. Hayes only had two at-bats this spring with the Rangers, at least in these A games. Has a double and two trips. Doing the job today behind home plate. Of course, Luke Roy off with Team USA. Chirinos across the, the diamond in the Venezuela dugout. And a quick at bat for Brad Hayes. He strikes out, one away in the second inning. And if you're kind of wondering about Team Venezuela, what kind of pitching they can throw out there, we've seen Will Desma come here. But of course, King Felix is on this roster. The Rangers, Martin Perez. Julio Shashin as well. There's, there's good opportunities here. Shashin with the Angels now. I got a couple of good starters to go with this really strong lineup in Venezuela. Doug Bernier gets to start today at second base and will be batting eight. And he has been all over the diamond for the Rangers this spring. Well-traveled veteran player, some 15 professional seasons. And he's a guy who very much in the mix for a spot as an extra on this Rangers club come opening day. So versatile. I think he's done everything but catch in his pro career. We know about the value of that, right? We continue to talk about where we are, value of guys that can play multiple positions. Swings at this one, but lifts it high in the air to the deepest part of the park and handled out there by Enciarte for out number two. So two away. Now the ninth spot of the order. Hanser Alberto will get his look at Ledesma. And we've already been crossed up for the first time today. We thought we're going to see nine different relief pitchers for Venezuela, one each inning, but Ledesma, after really a momentary loss of command in the first inning, I thought that might be the other reason he would be just one inning today. Well, he's come out for a second. I don't think if we've learned anything so far, it's that we can't count on your sources. <laughs> Unreliable. I think, I think that is a very good place to begin <laughs> any game. Yes. Because I don't see anybody warming up either in the Team Venezuela bullpen, so I'm wondering if Ledesma potentially is going out for a third inning. 1-0 pitch. That's ball two. Well, CJ, it's that day and age where you never know what's real, what's not. Hey, Omar Vizquel trying to <laughs> be a little sneaky, throw out a little fake news out there. As if that was going to change anything that the Rangers were going to do. They're going to put the same lineup out there regardless. But, you know, it probably comes important for Will Desmond to throw well. For Omar Vizquel, running a pitching staff, not something he's done. Outside of what's going on in the WBC. And so maybe he's giving Will Desmond a chance to kind of show what he can do. See what kind of role he can use him in once the WBC actually gets started. Well, the automatic strike, three and one to Hanser. Alberto with five hits this spring. I mean, he did do a great job last year at the plate in the minor leagues. And again, talk about versatility. Answers the, the epitome of that. So he takes ball four. And the Rangers have another base runner. A lot of value. Can run the bases. Can play not just anywhere on the diamond, but all the, the very difficult positions, those premium defensive positions you feel very comfortable with hands are there. I think last year, I think it was one error in 150 innings and opportunities then with, with the Rangers. So he was as sure-handed as you can be, as he always is. And now he manages to extend this inning back to the leadoff man, Carlos Gomez, who's swung a pretty good bat this spring. Double a home run the other day, four hits so far this spring. And he was swinging for all of it right there. Yeah, he was. There you go. A little note on Hanser. The gold glove in 2014. Top defensive shortstop in the minors. He was the Rangers minor league defensive player of the year. That's, that's the part of the game you never worry about 
with Hanser. Nice little lead over at first, and he'll have to run back in there. Carlos Gomez for him, a, a big season beckoning this year. So he signed the one-year deal with the Rangers in the offseason. A, because he liked it here. B, he wants to prove to the rest of the world that he's worth a lot more. Snap throw to first. But hands are back in there easily. It was good to see Carlos Gomez do so well when he got over here to the Rangers last year. Not just for Rangers fans. Obviously, he was a big part of helping out down the stretch. But this is one of the great personalities of the game. We talk a lot of times. People say, oh, is baseball too slow? Is it too boring? Not when Carlos Gomez is playing baseball. No, no. It's never boring for him. And you see him struggle a little bit, and you start to wonder, okay, you know, is he starting to slip? Uh, and it was a great comeback for him once he got here with the Rangers, and it's good to see him back on top, top, and it's certainly great to see him back in this uniform. Holds up on a close pitch, one and two the count. Baseball needs those personalities. I think I it's important. Let me rub a couple people the wrong way. We've seen it, right? It's little instances here and there, but so what, man? It's exciting. Yeah, he plays with great flair. Defensively, offensively, a lot of confidence. Desma with a check of first. And gets Gomez to pop it up. This one will drift foul. And Perez, no, now comes back into fair territory to make the play. Way to stay with it. Look out. But Rangers on the board on the Ryan Rua home run. We head to the third in a 5-1 game. the way Colin Coward and Jason Whitlock do. Brains to know and the guts to say. Catch Colin and Jason as they team up for FS1's daily sports talk show. Speak for yourself this weekday at 4 p.m. Central. Ah, yes. A lot of young fans here today. Now, here's, here's a question. It's Thursday. <laughs> Kind of like a school day for a lot of people. Feels like it might be. I don't know, for spring break here? I don't know. I have no idea. It seems like it's different around the country. I don't know what's going on here in Arizona. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to be writing a lot of notes, get some of those kids out of trouble maybe, potentially. They have the video evidence now, thanks to you, pointing well, it out. Yeah, and I, I wanted to apologize. I don't mean to call anybody <laughs> out. That's fine. If you're going to, if you're going to ditch, I mean, this is as good a reason as any. Well, in this third inning, we'll see the same three who started last inning for Venezuela. Carlos Gonzalez, Rugnet Odor, and Martin Prado. Jimmy Reyes, and, and that's a little bit of an oddity. A lot of times you see the guys coming over from the minor league side. If they have to come in to finish an inning, that's usually the day. That's usually what they're called to do. A little bouncer, first base side foul. Now the just-in-case guys, yeah. right? But Jimmy's getting a chance to come back out again. Well, I like it, and again, 
listen, he wasn't in the mix when, when spring camp started. wasn't necessarily the idea, but he gets an opportunity. Did a really nice job. Got a couple of ground balls facing Herrera and then Miguel Cabrera. Now he gets Carlos Gonzalez and at least Odor, an opportunity against some really, really good left-handed big league hitters. And as a guy who's coming over from minor league camp, it's just a monster opportunity to show what you can do and, again, maybe leave an impression with the big league staff. A well, full count now on Carlos Gonzalez. He hit a monster home run in the second inning. And stays alive. That was off Chichi Gonzalez. After Chichi, by the way, one, two, three in the first inning. Boy, I mean, couldn't have been sharper. But the second inning got away from him a little bit. So a lot of fastballs that were up, some location that was missed. And then when he hit his location, a couple of bad breaks and just kind of snowballed that inning. Carlos Gonzalez kicked it off with the monster home run. And he chases strike three, so he strikes out to start the third inning. Jimmy Reyes will always have this under his belt, trying to go down and away, but he finishes up over the plate a little bit and gets Cargo to chase the ball and probably eyes lighting up. I don't know if we can trust the radar gun on the scoreboard. It's at 64 miles an hour. I think <laughs> I'm guessing it was a little bit harder than that. Can't say for sure. We'll have that audited. But I'm with you. I think that was probably well in excess of 64 as he now goes a little upstairs to Rugnet Odor. Rugnet uh, spanked a single very sharply up the middle in his at bat in the second inning. Rugi's uncle, Rugless Odor who played both in the Indians and Brewers organizations. Well, he's the hitting coach for this Venezuela team. Let's see, Rugi's done a nice job this spring, consistently getting on base. Two what and one. What a cool opportunity, right, to have your dad be your hitting coach in the WBC, but then there's pluses and minuses, and whether you coach your kids at home in Little League, right, there's pluses and minuses to being there. It's a great time to spend with your son, but I'm wondering if there's ever, like, a... You know, excuse me, his uncle, like you ever just, you know, talk to him like family, you know, just tell him to be quiet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah zip it. Here's a well-struck ball out to right field. Mazzara back. Does he have room? He does. Just enough room in deep right field. And Odor retired two out here with the third inning. Launch angle, I think, a little bit too high on this one for Odor. Just got under it. A great swing on this ball. It was up. And you never know here in Arizona. Off the bat, you're thinking that's probably a regular fly ball, but the ball will carry here a little bit. And just watch Mazar do a nice job of finding the ball. Now, Martin Prado. Same swing, right? Same traject, same everything. On 10 other days here in Arizona. And it's out. As we look out to the flight poles, there's no wind at all at the moment. Usually there's something blowing out but not at all today it is a still warm day here in the desert if this was that game on the fifth that we did when they played the <laughs> Chicago Cubs and we saw six home runs that day yes that is a home run here on that day every single time well, two outs nobody on Jimmy Reyes who got the final two outs last inning has looked very good retired four in a row Prada who doubled in the second Holds off the count, two and one. Ray, as we mentioned, a seventh round pick by the Rangers a few years ago. Last year, well, probably not his best year, Triple A Round Rock, especially compared to 2015, the year before, when it looked like he really might be on the cusp of being a legitimate big league contributor in 2015. He had a five and three record, a 231 earned run average. At Round Rock, very good numbers. 3-1 pitch, and that one flared into left field. Base hit for Martin Prado. Lost his bat in the transaction, but that's okay. He'll be happy to give that one up for the base hit. That's a perfect example, as we see right here. A good pitch, well located. Get a guy to hit the ball off the end of the bat, most likely, as we'll see it here. And just still turns into a 
negative result for the pitcher. But you'll take that. You know, you say like you will. Of course, you'll take it on the offensive side. But if you're Jimmy Reyes, you're happy with what you did as well. Now Hernan Perez. He had an RBI single in the second inning. So, yeah, if you're Reyes, you gave up that, what, 352-foot out to Odor. And you turn around and feel like you beat Prado, but mm -hmm. he ends up with a base hit. And that's baseball for you. And that's the way things go a lot of times. That's why some of the advanced metrics that we look at can dig in a little bit further because the base hit was a success by the pitcher. The flyout probably wasn't, right? It was right. more of a, a hitter getting himself out of the ballpark holding the ball. One and one to Perez. Well, Perez, after he singled in the second inning, stole the base. Mentioned he had 34 of those last year with the Brewers. One of the young players in Milwaukee. Providing a little hope for that franchise as they continue their rebuild. Boy, Milwaukee and Cincinnati, two teams in the National League Central Division who both blew it up at roughly the same time. And they did so right as the Chicago Cubs arrived from their rebuild. Made for some lopsided competition in that division last summer. And think about, too, if you're in that division right now in the National League Central and you're in the position that the Milwaukee Brewers are in. It's a daunting task to try oh. to get into a spot where even once you get through your re rebuild, how are you going to contend with the St. Louis Cardinals, with the Chicago Cubs, and even the Pittsburgh Pirates? It's certainly not an easy division to try to climb out from the cell that the Reds are in that same position as well. It's amazing how much uh, more forgiving fan bases are these days of the rebuild. It's, it's now become part of the, the cycle almost for so many franchises. And, and I think there are times when, when some fan bases are almost rooting for it. Like, man, I wish they would just, you know, put some dynamite to this thing and start over. Makes for some long years, though, that they're enjoying in Milwaukee. Or not Perez strikes out, and what a day for Jimmy Reyes. 5-1, Venezuela. for the new ballpark, which will be built just to the south of Texas Live on what is currently the A and B parking lots. We have uh, contracted with HKS Architects out of Dallas, Brian Truby and his team to do the design work for us. And we hope to, to be in the ground by probably the fall, but we're very excited about the early development phases of the project. And for Texas Live, it's not just going to be available on game nights. It's 365. It is 365 days a year. We want Texas Live to become the clubhouse for all North Texas sports and the place where people want to be when they think about sports in our area. Yeah, super exciting stuff, Rob. Thanks very much. I'm sure Rangers fans can't wait to experience the new ballpark and everything Texas Live has to offer. And for more information, check out these websites and be sure to keep it tuned to Fox Sports Southwest for updates throughout the season. Well, Team Venezuela with a 5-1 lead here in Surprise over the Texas Rangers. We go to the bottom of the third inning. I'm Dave Raymond with C.J. Nikowski. Great to be with you as we take a look at our four Cactus League standings. Well, you don't see there, but the ties. <laughs> not, that would, not that it would matter. The Rangers 2-9-1, and one, and it has been a tough spring that way, at least in terms of wins and losses. The Angels have... Made the run at eight and three, the big lead in the division. Now I'm, I'm working on a little theory, CJ. As you look at these standings, mm -hmm. the teams that are better and th therefore have maybe more participants in the World Baseball Classic and therefore are thinner down here at spring training are likely to have the worst records. And the teams that have struggled and don't maybe have as many players on the WBC rosters 
are having more success in winning games. Do you think there's anything to that? I think you could try to push that narrative a little That's bit. You going. might get away with it for a little while. Listen, I don't think we can look at a spring training record and really draw any strong conclusions could you say well the minor league system uh, isn't as good I don't think that's necessarily you know a fair comparison or, or something that's legitimate I mean spring training games are just they're run differently and yes you would like to win and you'd like to have a good record it is not the most important thing in spring training it's guys getting their work in getting the right amount of at bats guys getting healthy not pushing people uh, whether it be relievers coming out of the bullpen too many pitches in one day whatever it is there's so many different things going on that the record is just meaningless it would nice it would be nice to be nine and two as opposed to two and nine but it really does mean nothing okay Shinsu Chu who's hit by the pitch in the first inning He's jumped ahead here three and oh Bruce Rondon getting a little conversation out of the mound, the young man who has kind of ascended quickly through the Detroit Tigers system, signed as a free agent in 07, became a top prospect, was their minor league pitcher of the year at one point. Last year, a 5-2 and two record, a 297 earned run average in the big leagues for Rondon. And he grooves one. It's 3-1 and one to Chew. Big arm big arm right here for Rondon averaging 97 miles an hour last year with his fastball the first time he got to the big leagues back in 2013 the fastball average was 99 miles an hour that's an average not touching 99 that's what he was averaging and so it's a big fastball uh, that he has and interesting as we see there's a shift here right now in Chin Chu Chu I'm thinking to myself you know I wonder with all the data that we have and I get where we are with shifts but do you feel like Chin Chu Chu is going to be able to pull you know say 95 96 <laughs> miles an hour if it's on the outside corner I think you'd have a hard time doing it I'll take that a step further the three two little tight and two earns the walk here's the other thing about that number one uh, are you really worried about him pulling you know something with that kind of velocity number two with two strikes mm -hmm. I mean isn't it possible a guy's gonna cut down on the swing a little bit and try and serve it the other way sure and so I, I've always kind of wondered about that myself but again they do have the advantage of a lot more information and a lot brighter minds than uh, certainly mine. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Well, and I meant it. <laughs> Here's Nomar Mazzara. I mean, you know, I'm just kind of no, it's spitballing. No, but I'm with you, uh, and that's exactly right. And if you were really going to shift the best way, you would actually be shifting by count doing exactly right. what you said and maybe okay pull shift early once you get to two strikes or if you knew your pitcher was throwing an off-speed pitch that would also dictate how you may want to shift but you don't want to give away strategy either and so there's a fine balance as far as how often you shift but we see teams shifting now in between uh, at bats and yeah. while the counts going on so they're definitely getting there but what we saw there was a little surprising to me Mazzara with a big swing but got under it and this one is gonna hang up a long while in center field Finding the sun for it in Ciarte, and he'll make the catch. Four out, number one. Yeah, you know, and the other thing, certainly hitters change their approach less, I would say, today by count than they used to. That's right. right. I yep. mean, there are a lot of guys who will, who will just decide this is what I'm doing and I'm going to live with it. Uh, and I do wonder if you tip your hand sometimes with your defensive shifts. To a hitter like so if you are going to move it around a little bit are you telling them like well you better be looking inside here it's Mike Napoli steps in the you know, one thing I think the Rangers are going to do effectively this year CJ and this is even as a small brain person like myself could figure this out but with Chu and Napoli in the middle of the order mm -hmm. well they're just going to wear some dudes out yes they are we'll talk about some tough extended at bats And we usually think about that and reserve it for a leadoff hitter, right? And think, okay, in the one spot, that's the guy you want to see maybe working the count. But when you start to get two, three, four, we're going to get guys that, you know, see some pitches and go ripping early. But no, that's not necessarily the case for these middle of the hitter orders, uh, hitters, excuse me, in the middle of the order. And it's, it'll grind a, it'll grind a pitcher, make them work harder, make them overthink a little bit. It's a great asset to have. And so even though we see the bigger swings, right? You mentioned it, even with two strikes on guys. Um, there's still a lot of value uh, to me as far as I'm concerned uh, with seeing pitches. Now look at this home run to at bat ratio. I talked to Mike Napoli about this the other night at a Rangers event here in spring training. 13.5, right? That's a home run every 13.5 at bats with the Texas Rangers. And I said, I asked him, I said, did you know that's, that's Hall of Fame level? 
Chu is running. Bouncer up the middle. And a long look back at second. Plenty of time to get Napoli. Is, you know, Odor was moving on the play, and that put him in a position to make that play. Well, it goes down as a 4-3, but it was really more of a 6-3 as he fielded that ball to the left of second base. And that's what happens, too, with shifts or in that situation where you had a runner going where you find defenders. I mean, look where Odor is. That is the shortstop pinching up the middle where he ended up catching that ball, but because he was on the run, he ended up making the play. But to finish that thought real quickly on Mike Napoli, so one home run every 13.5 at bats, that's Hall of Fame level. There has only been one Hall of Famer in the 133 or however many hitters are in Cooperstown, players are in Cooperstown, that have a better home run per at bat rate than what he has had here in Texas. That's how good he has been when it comes to the home runs with the Texas Rangers. And I said, do you have any idea who that one guy might be? He said, I don't. Babe Ruth. Only Babe Ruth has a better home run to at bat ratio over the course of his career than Mike Napoli has as a Ranger. And so that's, like, that's pretty good then. I'd say so. I said, why don't you just play your whole career here? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think there's a part of him that, that, that <laughs> likes that idea. I mean, this offseason, there were a lot of suitors for Mike Napoli. There was a lot of conversation. And then uh, at some point, it just sort of emerged that, like, well, it's pretty clear Napoli's going back to Texas. Well, it was never, it wasn't official. Mm -hmm. Until the first day of spring training for some paperwork reasons as a pitch to Gallo runs the count to two and one. But it was basically done a long time ago. A guy who really relished the idea of coming back for a third time and a team that was more than happy to accommodate. That was an interesting offseason for him. I think watching the first base DH position, we had to watch other pieces fall, right? Edwin Encarnacion, Mark Trumbo, Mike Napoli, all kind of in that same boat of, boat of power sluggers that could fill both the first base and DH position. Tied on Gallo, 3-1 and one the count. Man on in scoring position, that's Shinsu Chu. Got on via the walk. It's a 5-1 to one Venezuela lead. Gallo waiting to show off some of his big time power. And turns it all out in there. Omar Mazzaro was running away from that one in the dugout and it was chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> it came in at him, he dodged it, and then it caromed off the wall right back at him again. Full count now on Gallo. Now he went down looking in the first inning. Payoff pitch. The walk. So Gallo, who has done a better job of that in recent years, he is on. Two men aboard for Ryan Rua, and we check it again with Emily Jones. Yeah, talk to Ryan Rua about, you know, just how he's adjusting, fitting in this spring training as opposed to in the past. And he said just the fact that he was able to spend the entire year with the big club last year helped him tremendously. While he didn't get the number of at bats he would have if he were in the minor leagues, he's he'll make every time just to be in this big atmosphere learn how to be a player on the bench that doesn't necessarily as, as consistently as he might wise I also asked him too about the the I guess pressure of becoming a, a dad here in the next couple of weeks he said yeah that that's far scarier than anything on the baseball field could be uh, even in that same conversation so Ryan gonna be a dad in just a couple of weeks as uh, he and his wife will welcome a baby boy right around opening day. So a lot on the plate of Ryan Rua this spring training and this season, guys. Yeah, thanks, Emily. How about that, CJ? I mean, when you talk about, you know, the the ancillary distractions in one's life, and I, I, I marvel at big league ball players <laughs> what they deal with just doing their job. They start throwing in all those big life experiences, man. My goodness. And do not forget the women behind these guys because they're oh, taking no on the bigger role in that process because as a guy like Ryan Rue, you're going through the competition and wife's at home dealing with the kids and need your help. These uh, these ladies never get enough credit for what they do and supporting their men along the way. But you're right, a lot going on. You want to be there more than you can be. As a father of three, I will tell you, my wife never lets me live, live down the fact that I missed the birth of one of my children because of baseball. Is that right? I was at Miyazaki, Japan. I wasn't catching that flight in time to get back and <laughs> get that reminder every once in a while. Rua, who homered in the second inning. So it's at one and one here. Bruce Rondon. So a little visit for Rondon, but he 
stayed in the game. A couple of walks allowed by Rondon. And now one big swing. And it'll be a much more interesting game again. Look out, two and one the count. And the walks weren't too bad last year. Rondo, just three per nine. That's a really good rate. The year before, though, was five and a half. He's always had great strikeout stuff. 10.4 strikeouts per nine innings over the course of his career, which is a really good number. But the walks every once in a while can creep in. And I don't know if you remember a couple years ago, at the end of the 2015 season, the Tigers sent him home in September for, quote, lack of effort, which I had never seen before. So there's been some lack of consistency, at least. Uh, to say with Rondon, both as I mentioned in the strike zone, but then the Tigers a couple of years ago kind of calling him out and questioning his effort level. There's so much upside uh, in this guy with the great arm that he has and the great fastball, and he's still young at just 26 years old. Looks like he's going uh, for a little bit of his countryman's physique. I mean, Pablo Sandoval look is a high bouncer short. They go the short way to second base to force out Gallo to end the inning. A couple of base runners, but nothing doing for the Rangers. They trail by four. Fight night on FS1, ninth-ranked Vitor Belfort returns home to face 10th-ranked Kelvin Gastelow, plus the 12th-ranked fighter, and I don't know his first name, Volante, GM maybe, faces the biggest fight of his career against 6th-ranked legendary Shogun. Don't miss UFC Fight Night Saturday at 6 Central on FS1. No, she should, she should not be up watching. She needs to... She needs to get to bed early. Based on that picture, I don't think either one of those guys would be too upset with you. Did you see the looks in that promo? Those guys, they looked a little angry. Yeah. I don't think you'd want to say their name wrong in front of them. No. If anybody knows the name of... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's Italian. G so it's G-I-A-N. But I believe you say it like a J. Feel, feel free to, to tweet it It's like us. the old gif-jif argument, right? Yeah. But that's a word you don't have to... <laughs> Miss a guy's name. Yeah. All right, Dylan G is is in the game for the Rangers, uh, replacing Jimmy Reyes, who, by the way, did a fantastic job. All right, gets a ground ball to short. Anzer Alberto right there, and that is out number one. Well, talking about uh, UFC fight night. Let's check in with Emily Jones, who probably knows a lot more about this. I do not know anything about that, <laughs> no. but I do know a little bit about Mike Napoli. I know he is happy to be back with the Rangers. Nap back with this team uh, at first base. What's this spring been like? And, and explain to me just how happy you are to be back. <laughs> I'm really happy, you know, the, to be back with all these guys that uh, they have so much fun during the game. You know, anytime it's uh, it's fun playing with them and being back here to, you know, you know, chase a championship. As you get more advanced in your years, how does your approach to spring change, or does it at all? Uh, I mean, it does a little bit. When I was younger, you know, I was trying to impress and, and be ready and then um, just show everybody what I can do. Um, now it's to, 
you know, work on my skills, get my body in the right shape for, you know, April 4th. And, uh, you know, I go after it like that. You know, just get in the, get in the gym, come out here and, and get my legs in shape and, uh, you know, work on my swing. It's been so fun to watch you since your first in in Texas kind of grow into this uh, player, this leader that you've grown into. Where did that come from? How much have you embraced that? And now what's it like to be on, on the other end of that to where guys are seeking out your advice and want to know your thoughts on things all the time? Yeah, I mean, it's been fun. You know, I knew when I was a young kid, I had great uh, veterans to look up to. Um, you know, I learned it from them. You know, just picked little pieces from each each veteran and, and you know, became myself. You know, I, I'm in here and uh, I'm just myself and, you know, I have fun with the guys. I like to bring people together. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a family oriented place around here. You know, we all care for each other and it's uh, it's a lot of fun coming to ballpark knowing that, you know, somebody has your back and they're going to pick you up when things aren't going good for you. And it's the same thing with me. So um, it's a lot of fun to be able to, you know, play with these guys. You know, it's a it's a place that I'm familiar with and uh, I just love being here. One more thing I want to ask you. There's so many uh, statistics out there, advanced sabermetrics, all these things. and something you can't quantify is that chemistry that everyone talks about I know you're big on that how do you quantify that as not only a player but as a team I mean it's it's, it's real important I mean you can't have a bunch of individuals going out there playing for themselves you know when, when you get a group of guys that uh, play for each other go out there and play as a team um, it works you know it's I've been in a lot of places and um, it seems to always be like that you know when, when a team comes together it uh, helps you through tough times, which you know every team's going to go through during the year. It's uh, how quick you get out of them, and you know when you stay together, it's it's easy to get out of them. Yep. we're happy you're back. We'll talk to you soon, guys. Back up to you. Thanks, Emily. Too late to ask him if he knows anything about uh, UFC. There's a fly ball in the left field, and Rua takes care of it. The inning is over. Dylan G with a one-two-three, top of the fourth inning. Nicely done. It's still five-one Venezuela. baseball cactus league will be behind us soon and then it's time to start the regular season what a first week it will be here to talk all about it is the executive vice president for ballpark entertainment our good friend chuck morgan and chuck what a great opening week it is a night game to start the season on april the third and it gets better from there john it is baseball time in texas the cleveland indians come to globe life park in arlington to open the season and then the oakland a's come to the ballpark for a big weekend series it all starts on friday night with the best fireworks shows in Texas right there at Globe Life Park. And then on Saturday, April the 8th, how about this right here? A nice hooded, lightweight oh. jacket, very nice quality, uh, brought to you by TXU Energy, first 15,000, 14 and under. I hated to open this up inside, you know. Yeah, but that's bad luck, I think, Chuck, to do that, isn't it? Well, you know, back to my hee-haw days, if I didn't have any bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Nice umbrella. This will be given away on Sunday against Oakland. First 15,000 compliments of AT&T. The AT&T Rangers umbrella on Sunday, April 9th against Oakland. Yeah, and uh, with any luck, we will not need the AT&T umbrella in the first homestand of the season, but it should be a great homestand involving the American League champs and the Oakland Athletics. Thanks, Chuck. We're looking forward to a fantastic season of Rangers baseball. And if you want tickets, just go to TexasRangers.com. There we go, enjoying the sunshine and the beautiful weather down here in the Sonoran Desert. We are just talking to Mike Napoli last half inning about returning to the Texas Rangers, a guy who has already brought many thrilling moments to Rangers fans. Excited to be back. And, uh, well, I mean, really kind of a key role he's going to be filling this year with this team. No doubt. There was a big need, first base, DH. We talked about kind of how the offseason had gone. Mike Napoli fills that void that was left until he signed here right at the beginning of spring training. But I really liked what he said about team chemistry and Emily kind of brought it up. You know, in this day of advanced metrics and everything becomes about numbers that sometimes that gets lost. It doesn't get lost on the Rangers. They understand it. They understand the value of the combination of numbers and scouting and getting the right people in place. An organization like the Royals, it's the same way where they put a lot of value on personality. But I think sometimes in that sabermetric community, it could be forgotten. You're not going to find a player in the game, and I doubt you're going to find very many coaches uh, that don't uh, value having good guys that understand the cohesiveness and how a guy like Mike Napoli can help bring a team together and how important that can be over the course of a 162-game season. 
Well, we get going here now in the bottom of the fourth inning. Silvino Bracho is the new pitcher. Arizona Diamondback right-hander. He is the third pitcher this afternoon for Team Venezuela. He gets the bottom third of the Rangers order in a 5-1 game. Brett Hayes struck out in the second inning. is in a hole here, 0-2. Bracho looks like he's bringing it a little bit. That last fastball registered at 94. Radar gun becoming nice and clean out of his hand. Well, Bruce Rondon just pitched the third inning, and he's got some pretty good heat. And now Bracho, there's a bouncer third base to his left for it is Prado. Straightens and makes the good play. One out here in the fourth inning. Bracho last year, 13 relief outings for the Diamondbacks. It was his first, or rather, that was a couple years ago in his first big league season, 2015. And then last year, some time in the minor leagues as well as in the big leagues. But last year wasn't as kind to him. At the major league level, a 730 earned run average in 26 appearances. He runs this one tight on Doug Bernier. Mentioned that fastball last year averaged around 93 miles an hour. Just five foot ten. Some good power from the guy who's not particularly tall. That was a pretty nice little breaking ball to get Bernier now one and one. Yeah, well, and Rondon wasn't very tall, right? Rondon's like 5'10. So a couple of shorter power pitchers for Venezuela. No. Bruce Rondon? No, he's like 6'3". Dude. Was he's, he 6'3"? He's, he's a big dude, yeah. You sure? 6'3", 275, he's listed at. What am I thinking of? Maybe I'm thinking of Jimmy Reyes. Then. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I've read a couple of bios today. <laughs> I read 5'10 and took note. A little high in the count, 3-1. and one. Well, I am thinking of Jimmy Reyes. 5'10", 200 pounds. There you go. There you go. Duly noted. You don't see two... 5 10 pitchers in the same game very often. You don't. You just don't. You're right. Or don't. Huge. 6 3. And well over 200 pounds. This one popped up first base side. And it's been an adventure over there today for Anand Perez. He, he makes that play for the second out of the inning. That's twice, though, on a high pop up near the bag. He's taking that same route that I've seen you take <laughs> after dinner back to the hotel. <laughs> Well, at least after dinner, not any later than that. But you got a high sky that you're dealing with right now. And then, of course, Perez, not a first baseman, but you think about this team and how solid the infield is for Team Venezuela. And that's the spot that he's going to play, the spot that they're going to use him. Well, just as kind of an advanced scout note, I would say to teams in Pool D, you might want to. You might want to employ a little bit of the high pop-up near first. The intentional pop-up. The intentional pop-up might be that might be a good strategy. Hands are walked back in the second inning. 5-1 Venezuela. And I'll oh. say this too, real quick. So he, you know, prominently plays third base, has played some second base throughout his career. He's had a couple of starts at first base, but not a lot of time spent there. You say, well, what's the difference? Third base, first base, pop-ups a pop-up, but it's not. It comes off the bat differently. Just like we talk about left field and right field being different. And when you're dealing with pop-ups off a left-handed bat compared to a right-handed bat in a different arc, um, and the movement that those pop-ups will have on the way down, it'd be a little tricky. And that's why they're playing these exhibition games and kind of going through it uh, a little bit with some guys that are playing out of position. Alberto chases strike three, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Bracho. And we played four innings this afternoon, 5-1 to one, Venezuela.
is on Wednesday, April 5th, when the Rangers take on the Cleveland Indians. Celebrate the start of the baseball season with all the dollar hot dogs you can eat. Get your tickets at TexasRangers.com. And we are now going to the top of the fifth inning here with Team Venezuela leading the Rangers by a score of 5-1. to one. Here's Dave Raymond. All right, thank you, man. Very nicely done. You have... You've just very smoothly transitioned into those readers. By the way, Diane back home in the, the Metroplex mm -hmm. wanting to inform me that it's this week and next week, our spring break for a lot of the Metroplex schools. <laughs> so a lot oh. of those kids have been busting on for being here instead of a school. It's it's fine. They're, it's excused absence more than likely. Yes, I think I made the mistake of thinking it was local kids. But of course, yeah. What, I mean, sure. is there a better spring break? No. When you're a kid to come, then coming to spring training right now, if you're a Ranger fan, beautiful ballpark here, come to Arizona. So I knew there was a lot of spring break next week. I didn't know that the kids were off in some schools this week. Bouncer over to the right side, easily played by Doug Vernier, and Odubel Herrera retired to start the fifth inning. Like I said, different everywhere. Spring break for us in Georgia. It's the first week of April. Is that right? Yeah, but they also, my kids, and I never had this when I was younger, two breaks. A two. winter break in February and a full week as well for spring break, first week in April. Stay like home. a week long in, in the winter break? Uh, for two. I have three kids at three different schools, but two of them, yes, had the full week off. That's absurd. Here's Miguel Cabrera. 0 for 2 so far today. You don't need to tell people too much about a guy like Miguel Cabrera because he is so well known, one of the, the great hitters, not just in today's game, but really you start putting him up against other right handed hitters in the history of the game. I mean, you could certainly make an argument that Cabrera may well even be the best right handed hitter. The Triple Crown winner, 2012, and a hard one hopper. To short, hands are Alberto right there. Two up, two down in the fifth. Well, it's one of the things we do here at spring training is we're ready for the regular season. And part of that is getting ready for some of the, the big events and the highlights of the regular season that will be coming up on the schedule. Of course, opening day coming up. And that's going to be the Cleveland Indians. Yep. Italy. Padres, Phillies, Mets, and Marlins all at home. We'll go to the new ballpark in Atlanta. And we'll go to the uh, ballpark in Washington, D.C. as well this year. And then every holiday, apparently known to man, <laughs> will be at home this year. Well, those are always fun, too, because what Major League Baseball does, right, with Mother's Day and Father's Day and the pink bats and the blue bats and the awareness for, for causes. It's fantastic how the game has changed in that regard. So it's nice that we're going to have those in Texas. You mentioned going to that new ballpark in Atlanta. That's going to be an exciting time. Looking forward to checking that ballpark out as we start to get excited about what's going to be coming here in Texas in a couple of years. We can only assume that you'll be hosting some sort of social gathering when we're in town. <laughs> what do you got planned for us? Uh, you know, I haven't thought it out yet. I'm trying to get through today first. I'm, I'm a one day at a time kind of guy, Dave. Well, the good news is Dave Burchett and I have been working on those plans for you. <laughs> Yep. One two pitch. Yeah, the itinerary already laid out. Yeah. Fair ball just behind the bag and a real nice quick toss to first to barely get Carlos Gonzalez. A one, two, three inning for Dylan G. And as we go to the fifth inning, we send it back to the studio. Guys, thanks very much. John Radigan here in the Fox Sports Studios, and we're getting ready for baseball season. That means we're getting ready for all the great giveaways at Globe Life Park in Arlington, too. Chuck Morgan's the executive vice president of Ballpark Entertainment and all things fun at Globe Life. And, Chuck, you've got some great promotional items this year, including that baby right there. Yeah, that may be one of the greatest bobbleheads in the history of Texas Rangers bobbleheads, and it may be in its own classification because the head doesn't bobble, but the legs oh, do. Oh, I like that. So it's the Adrian Beltre dancing legs bobblehead. And that's compliments of the great folks at Medical City Healthcare. First 15,000 fans get that one. Of course, it's always great to watch Adrian dance in the batter's box when a pitch is coming. Now in. you can watch him at home with you your own it. bobble legs. You got All right, what else you got? Chuck? April 30th, Powerade Rangers duffel bag, a real nice uh, duffel bag. First 15,000 fans. Then how about April 22nd when we play the Kansas City Royals? You think Kansas City? 
Pink barbecue. Barbecue. A barbecue spatula. Texas Rangers logo on the bottom of the spatula. And then again, this, uh, this year on Thursdays, we're giving away the Texas Rangers collectible pins. On the first Thursday, April 20th, when we play the Royals, you're going to get a Texas Rangers replica 1972 cap for your pins. And just a teaser, a couple of the pins that will be given away include a Hugh Darvish pin and a Nolan Ryan pin. Thank you, Chuck. We're looking forward to a great season. And for all your ticket needs, please go to TexasRangers.com. Halfway there this afternoon, Rugnet Odor and Team Venezuela in town for this spring training friendly. Top of the order due for the Rangers in this fifth inning. Be against another new pitcher, Gregory Infante. This copyrighted telecast presented by Authority of the World Baseball Classic Inc. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of today's game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Short way of saying, do not disseminate. No stealing. No stealing. Here we go. Gregory Infante taking over. Only one Rangers hit allowed so far today. Last year, the season of the minors for Infante. He was originally brought stateside by the Chicago White Sox in 2006. Last year, you look at those, uh, those minor league games, though, some time at AA Reading, a little bit of time at AAA Lehigh Valley. So a guy right on the cusp of the big leagues, and getting a little bit of that, that taste with this World Baseball Classic competition. I think another part of this, too, is we talk about how exciting it is for these guys to pitch for their country and try to win the WBC, everything that goes along with participating for your country but also an opportunity maybe you're going to face some bigger competition right during that WBC and thinking about getting some big outs exposing yourself a little bit more and certainly maybe sliding or climbing up the ladder a little bit higher within your even your own organization there were so many different opportunities here yes it's about team but there are personal opportunities for guys as well. So Infante great opportunity here. Carlos Gomez. Leading it off for the Rangers. 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. Takes a good rip at this one. Sends it well foul. Perez will give it a look regardless. Oh, well, not Perez. Got some exercise there. He made a good long run after that one. You know, usually you can pull up and go ahead and just let the, let right. the ball boy down the line take that, but. He's a gentleman. He went down there and got that one himself. Oh, two. And there's a the ball. Carlos Gomez. A couple of changes. Left field. New left fielder is Sanchez. Jose Sanchez just came on this inning. Right field. Alexis Bell. He's a, a minor leaguer, a Cuban minor leaguer, actually from the, the Rangers side who has come over today. And there's a swing and a miss. By Gomez. So I don't know how that works from Cuba, <laughs> but you get to play on the Venezuelan team maybe just just today. Well, that was <laughs> that's what's so interesting about uh, this team, Venezuela, is that there's only three outfielders. I mentioned it earlier, right? There's only three that are listed on the roster. And so right now, what they're doing is borrowing players, you know, from minor league camp here to help out. But I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen here. I mean, obviously they have some guys that they can move around a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's kind of strange that immediately the first set of substitutions off of their big league guys, you know, have to be players that aren't even on the team. Aren't even from the country. <laughs> For crying also out that. <laughs> it's like we're not even trying. They can't fool me. So Gomez strikes out. Now Shinsu Chu just sent one right back in our direction, but unfortunately was caught by that netting. Sanchez obviously not playing for Team Cuba. Apparently but not. But here he is. Wonder, and is he like, I hope you guys lose? Like when they're sitting in the dugout? Like he's obviously a Team Cuba guy. I would assume that's got to be the sure. team he's rooting for. Would he go so far as to Jake one out there at some point? It's <laughs> <laughs> me. Two takes it low, and it's one and two. Now, speaking of which, Venezuela, they are in Pool D. And 
They join Italy, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. And play begins in Pool D. Is it tomorrow? No, two days, the 10th. Two, okay, the 10th. No, tomorrow's the 10th. I'm sorry. What is today? Yep, there we go. It's tomorrow. Stay hot. That one in the dirt, two and two. To chew. Achoo. Now, Pool A has already completed play. And Israel ran the table. 3 and 0. The Netherlands went 2 and 1. They both advanced. Pool B is just about done. They're playing today, I believe. Japan came into today 2 and 0. Australia and Cuba both 1 and 1. And China win was so far in two tries. Bouncer first. Nice job backing up on it by Perez. And he feeds it Fonte for the second out of the inning. Yeah, so far the story of the WBC has been a team from Israel. The great job that they did out in Korea. They will now move on, as you mentioned. They'll go to Japan uh, for the next round as Pool B will have to finish out. We'll see who ultimately uh, will be in that pool. But it's getting good. And now for Team Venezuela, they'll start things up tomorrow. They have Puerto Rico. That game will be at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Now this is kind of confusing. It says 9.30 Eastern, 8 p.m. local. I don't think that's right, Dave. <laughs> that's almost, that's borderline impossible. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's right. I got a, I got a half hour discrepancy at least there somewhere. Right, even if, even if you, even if you got the time zones right. Yeah. You still have the 30 minute differential, which is a, it's a tough one. I think is a problem. But their first three, their pool play games will be Puerto Rico, Italy, and Mexico, which becomes interesting when you think about trying to set your rotation, right? It's not just about going out and throwing your best in, in game one or game two. Now, certainly Puerto Rico will be a team that will be tough to contend with. Mexico will be as well. Italy, I would assume on paper, is probably the weakest of the group. And so do you throw your best starters in games one and three, most likely for Team Venezuela, which may, seems to make uh, the most sense, and maybe your third starter would go uh, in game two. I think that's one of the, the biggest traps that you run into when you start playing that game. You do have to be careful. Without a doubt. So you say, okay, we'll just go with your strongest. That's right. One and win. two. And win that second game, too. No, you're going to be in a great spot. And if you, you know, say you lose that first one to Puerto Rico, you want to be saving a pitcher for game three when you really need to have game two. That's that's part of it. It's not just about filling up the lineup and going out there, but pitching strategy is a big part of the WBC. Mazzaro with a loud, a high fly to left field, but that one settles in Sanchez's glove to complete another 1 2 3 inning, this time for Infante. We'll go to the sixth inning, 5 1, Venezuela. of five to one as we head to the top of the sixth here in Surprise, Arizona. Pleased to be joined by the Rangers designated hitter Shinsu Chu. Chu, does that sound weird yet? Designated hitter? I know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's okay. Still keep playing, right? Still yeah. keeping the lineup, so that's great. Um, yeah. Uh, whatever teams make it better, you know, I'm happy to do it. And I always, you know, look for my names on lineup. That's the most important thing, you know, no matter what. But anyways, you know, I can help the team. So 
it is an adjustment though we, we talked about it a little bit before the game about you know how to keep yourself fresh how to stay engaged you think it'll be easier at home for sure than on the road right yeah that's a big adjustment for me you know uh, mentally physically everything you know uh, yeah that's what you say you know in the home in the 81 games pretty, pretty much a lot easier for me you know i know everywhere you know i know where is it you know warming up you know, we have a bedding case you know upstairs but in the road trips is the hardest part but some ballparks, you know, not much space in the dugout, and then um, some areas, no bedding cage. So um, that's tough, you know. But, but still, I try to figure it out how you keep, you know, lose, you know, how, how you keep um, swinging it in the, in the dugout. So. For you, staying healthy has got to be very high on the list. How, how do you, I, I guess, not let those thoughts creep into your head and, and not think about staying healthy and just play baseball? Yeah, I'm not, you know, I was in early careers. I'm not even thinking about, you know, health-wise. But I mean, now, you know, getting more over 30 years old, you know, comes an injury, comes, you know, people, you know, worry about, you know, health-wise, you know. So okay. I get that, you know, what I did it last year, four-time DL, you know, but three times, you know, muscle injury. That's the big. So um, I know Benny want to keep in the lineups. That's why I try to change it more, hitting the DH spot. So, uh, um Hopefully stay healthy whole year. You know, I know stay whole season, I know I can do it. So, yeah. You've become more of a leader on this team. They gained another leader in the offseason in Mike Napoli. You two have lockers next to each other. Um, and I know you've enjoyed his company so far. What's he been like as a teammate? Oh, he's a great, you know, I have experienced well, last year, two years ago, you know, with Napoli. First time I'm always against him. But this time I played together, you know. And then this this year, spring training, you know, next to my locker, you know, he teaches me a lot of good word, <laughs> a lot of good word and a bad word, you know. But I very enjoyed it, you know. But people, you know, whatever I say, definitely teaching me. Whatever I say, people are laughing. That's good, good part, you know. So. They, the team had some fun with you with Korea the other day has it been hard for you to watch your your country play without you being there what's that experience been like well yeah it's hard to watch you know I come 4 30 in the morning and you know, always tv's on you know um, my country playing the game but supposed to be there but I have a three times deal so talked about Rangers you know that's maybe maybe better focus in the season so um, yeah, that's hard to watch, you know. Hopefully, you know, KBO, you know, turn it around that moment, you know, turn it around and make it better uh, system, baseball system, so. And then one more thing I want to ask you, you know, the, the team does the free throw shooting contests, you know, every morning. And I've only gotten to see that for the first time this year. And the the uh, the antics that you bring to that are, are strong to quite strong. I, I did not know, and I don't think a lot of people knew, this this hidden personality within you. Is that, wh where does that inspiration come from for you to be uh, put on that production during those free throw contests? Well, I always, you know, every time I play for baseball, like probably everything, like whatever I did it, I, too much serious. That's sometimes help, sometimes make it, you know, stress myself. So I watch Adrian, you know, like how you play in the field, you know, and then Elvis, how you play in the field. So I want to be like more fun, not like Elvis, the hard to do it yeah, that way, but it's too much change, a like big change. But yeah, I try to be like fun in the field. That's why the basketball contest, you know, I try to be making laugh with every teammates in like five, ten minutes. Everybody together in the basketball court. Um, I wear in like jersey on it, you know, making fun. You know, people think about you always, you know, serious, you know. You know but laughing, I'm laughing in the dugout, but you know, always choose a serious. But I, they saw the like weird thing on it, you know, play the basketball. That's everybody laughing. That's really enjoyed it, you know. Always laughing, give us some energy, you know. So. Well, I will tell you too. You are bringing the fun to spring training. I appreciate it. And I know um, everyone keep else. It. Yes, keep, right. keep it up. Dave, we'll send it back up to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Hey, you, I'm telling you, the free throw shooting nonsense. I've seen morning. it yet. Oh, he's he's good. Really? Oh, Did yeah. you drain him? Uh, no, he, he's oh. not a good free throw shooter. <laughs> but he 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 brings a he he brings a lot of energy, and a different look. Uh, just crazy stuff with the hair. He'll wear a different. He'll wear. He'll wear a, a uni out there. He's, he's good times. So it's a quick inning at the top of the six for Venezuela. We go from Emily Jones to John Radigan.
Academy. I see progress. I see more kids out there, but we're not quite done yet, are we? Right. For the five fields at the Texas Rangers MLB Youth Academy at Mercy Street Sports Complex, presented by Toyota, are complete. The big show field and the building are under construction, should be done by September 1st. But we really need the community support to make sure this is truly the state-of-the-art facility we want it to be. No doubt. For those who don't know, it is obviously centered around baseball and softball, but there's so much more that the academy offers. That's right. Baseball and softball is truly the hook to get kids into after-school programming, career exploration activities, financial literacy classes. It's truly to create a major league citizen on and off the field. One of the things I love about it is how involved Texas Rangers players have been, not only lending moral support, but literally financial support to the project. We're so lucky to have such great and generous players. Josh Hamilton sponsored a field. Prince Fielder has batting cages. Martin Perez has a bullpen. Even Ian Desmond, Cole Hamels. Adrian Beltray will be the namesake of the indoor field. So when these kids come to play baseball, they will see that the big league players also have their back. So when you're making a donation, you're joining the Rangers players along with creating a legacy in West Dallas. Great stuff, Karen Morris. We appreciate it. And the Rangers Youth Academy still needs your help to make it the best academy in Major League Baseball. Donate today at TexasRangers.com slash academy. A 5-1 Venezuela. They did all the damage in the second inning. In fact, both teams did all their damage. In the second inning, we go to the bottom of the sixth. You know, every weekday morning, Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp, they go head-to-head -head on the day's hottest sports topics. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon. Weekdays from 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central only on Fox Sports 1. Well, this is my, you know, Chew was great, by the way. That was fantastic mm -hmm. interview. And, and he is such a great dude. But this is the best part right here. Of spring training, the way the guys, I, you know, you almost sense it. It's not that they don't mind; mm -hmm. they kind of enjoy it. They I don't, think they I don't do. Know why they do? Listen, during the season, it's very difficult. I think sometimes fans will get frustrated and don't understand why a big big leaguer won't stop and sign an autograph. And a lot of times, it's because if it's right before a game, or you know, even if it's 30 minutes before the game, it's never one. Right? A big crowd will come, and then you always have to kind of tell somebody no, which is a, a really awful feeling for a player. So some guys. Uh, whether it's just part of their preparation and don't have time or don't want to get caught up in a, you know, in a big autograph signing session before the game, a lot of times we'll say no because of that. In spring training, it's a little bit different. Since you choose day is done, you can relax. He's probably going to go work out and get a bite tea, whatever it's going to be, but there's no rush, and so the game's still going on. Competition is over, and so he can afford to stop and sign a few autographs. I think guys really understand the value of it and what it means to fans, but sometimes during the regular season, your schedule just doesn't really allow you to do that. So yeah, they enjoy interacting. They appreciate the fans. They know how important they are uh, to the complete success of the organization. It's also kind of a hoot that the game's going on and you're out on the warning track yeah. signing autographs. That just kind of you also can't do it during the regular yeah. season. Yeah. That's frowned upon. Yeah, well, a lot harder to pull that off. Yeah, two. That was a really neat interview because you get a little little insight into the personality. And he talked. It was interesting because there's one little blip in that interview. Or he talked about he was talking about having fun mm -hmm. and how he wants you know he sees the guys having fun and he wants to do that a little more and he's he's kind of coming out of his shell a little bit uh, you know back there with the the free throws but you can see and he talks about being so serious and and how that's good keeps you focused but it can also be damaging right you can be a little too serious and he, he recognizes that about himself and he's trying to trying to loosen up a little bit a little ground ball to Odor results in the first out of the inning. Well, think about this. I mean, we talked about it earlier. Miguel Cabrera, one of the greatest right-handed hitters the game has ever seen. I don't know if there's anybody that has more fun playing baseball than Miguel Cabrera. Now, when you're that good and you seem that relaxed and it seems like his talent just takes over, maybe it's a little bit easier to have some fun. Some guys can't operate that way, right? Some guys have to be serious, have to be locked in. You find out what works for you, but I will tell you as you get near the end of your career, there'll be some times you start to look back and be like, oh, could I have had some more fun? Should I have maybe relaxed a little bit more? And I think with some of the personalities in this Texas Rangers clubhouse, since Chu Chu has kind of been able to see that a little bit, maybe appreciate it, it does not have to be all serious all the time. Come game time, yes, you got to go do your job and you got to be prepared and you have to be ready. But I think coming out of that Korean culture, I spent two seasons playing over there. Uh, that is not something that's necessarily uh, looked at as an asset, having fun during the baseball <laughs> season, during the game. So it's probably something that has been ingrained in him ever since he was a sure. amateur player. What I liked what he said 
It was kind of the time-honored tradition of when you play with players from different countries, whether you're here in the States doing it or uh, you go overseas and play, which was what he mentioned, learning new words. And not all, <laughs> yeah. not all good words all the time, necessarily. <laughs> that is kind of a time-honored tradition uh, amongst baseball players in whatever country you're playing, whatever teammates. It's like, oh, yeah, I want to learn how to say hi. But I also want to learn how to say this. And uh, maybe you shouldn't be saying that too much. Gallo sends one back at us. Count stays one and two. Joey, 0 for 1 today, a strikeout and a walk. But in the three true outcomes fashion, there's one left for him to produce here this afternoon. But that's not going to be it. A little high chopper first base. Wicked hop. And it skips by into foul ground. And Gallo has himself a bad hop single. That was some kind of misdirection right there. Hernan oh, Perez, yeah. he's, he's already had kind of an eventful day at first. That just adds to it. Again, you kind of wonder a little bit about, you know, whether or not Perez is comfortable there and still kind of learning first base a little bit and playing with that big glove. It's a completely different position, but it's almost like you feel like, okay, I'm going to get this nice little hop as you see him start to take a couple of steps forward because he wants to walk into that baseball so they can give a nice flip. Uh, to the pitcher, but that hit something and took a hard turn right. He had zero chance of getting that ball. Certainly not his fault. Gallo lifted for pinch runner Ryan Rua. One for two. He homered in the second inning. And prior to that bat hop single right there, the only other Rangers hit today. Josh Morgan, the runner over at first for Gallo. Over from the minor league side. Rua, we talked about it earlier. Guy from Ohio, big Indians fan growing up. Skipper for this Venezuela team, Omar Vizquel, one of his idols as a kid. And he got the thrill not only of being able to meet Vizquel today, but then to Homer against his team at his first at bat. He was the 11-time Gold Glove winner. Just shy of 3,000 hits in his career. 28-77 in Vizquel's incredible run. The pitch gets away from Chirinos. And Morgan able to advance to second base. Yeah, a little look at Omar Vizquel's career. 24 years. And as Adrian Beltre, let's see. Has a record for most games played at third base in Major League history. Vizquel at shortstop holds that record. Such a smooth fielder. Tremendous hands. And for a while there in Cleveland when it was o Omar Vizquel at short, Roberto Alomar at second, you're going to have a hard time finding a better double play condo combo in our game's history. I mean, Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker yeah. still, I believe, have the record for most games played together as teammates. I got to play with both of those guys at uh, the beginning of my career, the end of theirs. But you talk about uh, one of the great shortstops our game's ever seen. I've competed a bunch against Omar Vizquel uh, in the American League Central. But watching that up the middle combination, and then with Kenny Lofton in center as well, you talk about oh, being strong up the middle and Sandy Alomar Jr. behind the plate. That Cleveland Indians team was real strong in those years. Ball and two strikes on Ryan Rua. 5-1 game here in the sixth inning. When you think about Venezuela baseball, the first position you think of is shortstop because they've had such the rich tradition at shortstop, whether it be Aparicio, Concepcion, Vizquel. And when you run into players in today's game who, who come from Venezuela, Oftentimes, the conversation goes to shortstop. Even though they may be a catcher, they may be a second baseman, whatever the case. Rua strikes out of there two away. What a rich, rich tradition of great shortstop play in Venezuela. For a little more on Omar Vizquel, let's check in with Emily Jones. Yeah, and what an impact Omar Vizquel had on the career of Elvis Andrews. Obviously, Elvis looked up to Omar Vizquel throughout um, you know, his childhood growing up in Venezuela, playing the same position in his first year in the big leagues. The Rangers brought Omar in basically just to be his mentor, to teach him kind of the ways of the big leagues, uh, the ways of the shortstop position. It meant the world 
uh, to Elvis for him to be in that position and for the organization to be so thoughtful and mindful of you know his career path and what they wanted him to accomplish to to bring in a guy like Elvis Vizquel to really kind of hold his hand that first year in, in the big leagues. We got a little one into Larude's back. Second hit batter of the day. Now this is early today in the batting cages. Really good sign, of course, to see Elvis doing some work. And it said he's getting close. Jeff Bannister said before the game, he's kind of getting ready to ramp it up. He's participated in some sim games, simulation games, where you can control uh, the environment. And he was asked whether or not would he have to go play in some B games first. And it sounds like we may see. Elvis Andrews possibly this weekend playing in an A game. It seems like we're getting really close. And like you mentioned, certainly good news for the Rangers. They've been nice and conservative getting him back. Plenty of time this spring, a little extra time this spring training. So that's worked in his favor. Larud over at first base. Josh Morgan at second. Now a 1 0 count on Doug Bernier. Rangers have had some opportunities. Had a couple of base runners in the first, left them on. Same thing in the third inning. Now two more base runners in the sixth inning. And it's one and one on Bernier, who is hitless in two tries today. Jose Castillo, a man who has come on in this sixth inning for Venezuela. Gregory Infante, a scoreless fifth inning. Overall, they've got some very good pitching this afternoon. One one. Well, the Rangers have got some very good pitching today as well. In fact, we really didn't spend much time talking about Dylan G, but it's only because he rifled through the lineup as quickly as he did. Six hitters faced, six outs recorded. And there's a swing and a miss by Bernier to strike out and leave two more on base for the Rangers this afternoon. We'll go to the seventh inning. Venezuela leads by four. In the second inning, both teams have, have pitched the ball well, and Wesley Wright is out for a second inning of work. Wesley faced four batters in the sixth inning, surrendering a, a two-out double to Hernan Perez, but that's it. Got a strikeout in the inning as well. Left-hander in camp, uh, battling for potentially a left-hand roll in the bullpen. Alcides Escobar 
Waves through that one to make it one and one. And even if. You know, a guy like Wright is looked at as, you know, a shorter reliever yes. and kind of facing lefties. The idea of having him out there and sometimes in spring training, you want you want to get a longer look at guys. And so you ain't have him throw two innings, even though it wouldn't necessarily be his role in the bullpen for the Rangers. Slow hopper to third, but Josh Morgan on top of it. And his first opportunity of the afternoon takes care of Escobar one away. Back to the top of the order, Ender Inciarte. Venezuela got all five runs in the second inning. They did so on six hits, including a home run by Carlos Gonzalez. The Rangers one run came in the second inning, a solo home run by Ryan Rua. And Wesley Wright pours strike one right in there to the left-handed hitting Enciarte. And so that works out well for Wesley to get Enciarte here. Chance to face a a big league left-hander mm -hmm. and another one in Sanchez not a big leaguer but another lefty uh, in Sanchez who was on deck and, and again getting that extended look is important uh, this time in spring training because you can see more a lot of times you know, if you're only throwing an inning facing a couple hitters uh, you may not see everything that you want to see and so extending guys out even your short relievers in spring training is more about evaluation for Jeff Bannister I just missed with that curveball right there right formally a rule five Selection. This one popped up. Left side, playable. Morgan in foul ground. Two away. Wesley Wright was working his way up the Dodgers system before the Astros selected him in the Rule 5 draft, and he stuck with the Astros. In fact, he and I were talking about this type of a game today. He was in camp with the Astros, I want to say 08, 09. And in 09, the Astros played the Dominican Republic in a very similar exhibition. And in that game, Jose Capion, who was a minor leaguer with the Astros at the time, pitched against the Dominican Republic team, got down with an inning as he was walking off the field, was taking off his Astros jersey and walking to the Dominican side. Somebody tossed him a Dominican jersey, put it on, walked right back out to the mound to pitch the other half of the inning. <laughs> That's only in spring training and only in a WBC year. Yeah. We're talking about things you, you see in in the, the month of spring training that you don't see any other time. That kind of stuff. Two outs here. Nobody on. And Wright trying to complete a perfect inning. Did he go? Yes, he did. A strikeout. And it's a 1-2-3. Two, top of the seventh inning for Wesley Wright. 5-1 Venezuela as we stretch.
Utah fans enjoying it. A four-run game today. You know what you got it, you never lose it. <laughs> never had a day, so yeah. I wouldn't know. Yeah. Those moves stay with you. <laughs> Just the right pace for a warm day in Arizona. That's when you get them started. Got a butterfly, put it in there. Also, what a fun day to come here during spring training, hang out on the berm. Maybe a little bit disappointed if you're out there, right? Not a lot of wind, not nearly as many home runs as we saw. Back on our first game on the fifth, six home runs in that game. Man. Two today. This one, though, pretty well pitched game to this point. Anderson Machado is the new pitcher for Venezuela. And he starts us off with a strike. Drew Robinson, he was waiting on deck last inning. He came in defensively at shortstop. You see his numbers last year with Triple A Round Rock. And Drew is a guy, a lot like Doug Bernier, who made the final out last inning, who has that ability to play everywhere on the diamond. He smashes this one foul. He's also. You know, you can look at the numbers and you say the numbers have been decent at times this camp for Drew Robinson. But watching the at bats, what's been impressive, like two strike at bats, boy, he, he keeps battling. He does a little things to keep going and maybe find a hole somewhere. To, you know, he's got a good approach, and it, that's become more and more evident every day we've, we've watched him. What's so interesting, I think, about him, versatility, yes, defensively, put him in a bunch of different positions, but usually the versatile guys. When you look at the offensive side of their game, it usually doesn't include power, right? More often than not, their contact guys put the ball in play. You talked about his at-bats this spring. They've been really solid with two strikes. That's been a lot of talk uh, as far as what's going on around camp. But he's, he's got some pop, too. He's 41 home runs over the last couple of years between double-A AA and triple-A. Now, if you're looking at kind of him versus Benier and trying to, you know, compare the two, uh, a little bit more power. Uh, and a little bit younger. This is his first year on the 40 man roster as well. And so that certainly is going to give him a little bit of an advantage uh, if it does come down to one of those two for a spot on the roster. Well, he strikes out to start things in this seventh inning. Now, Delano De Shields and his first at bat of the day. Delano's had a pretty good camp. Lost a little weight in the offseason. He's been running the bases aggressively. Finds himself in a hole here 0 2. And what a big, big part of the Rangers run in 2015. He was in that leadoff spot. And last year, coming into camp, it was just assumed he'd resume that spot again in 2016. But he struggled a little bit. And, and he felt it, which is why he wanted to kind of remake his game a little bit this last offseason. And he has come in here with a purpose. In 2017, the one-two pitch from Machado. And we're all square. I think that's a reminder of how difficult this game is to play. You see a guy come up, have some success. You mentioned being a big part of a team and the success that a team had. And the assumption is made it's just going to be that easy, but it's not. It's very difficult to have su sustained success at this level. Goes the other way with it. But out there for it is Bell. And there are two gone. Well, now Will Middlebrooks with his first hit bat of the day. So we're starting to see the benches of both teams get into the game at this at this point. Bottom of the seventh inning at a four-run contest. Middlebrooks. He's got some time at third base in this camp. Skipper's going to have himself some decisions to make. He and John Daniels, and the rest of the baseball staff, continuing to evaluate on a day by day. And I, you know, I give Benny credit, man. Every day, you know, meets with the media. We all ask some good questions about one battle or another. Good fastball misses two and one. And when it comes to those battles and 
for what's going on with guys. It's not it's not day to day. It's baseball, right? I mean, it's like, okay, how's he done over the week? Okay, he had a bad day. Does that mean he's you know falling out of favor? No, you know, three, four, five in a row. Yeah. So it's a difficult evaluation process, and, and certainly difficult to answer those questions. Yeah, it takes time. Is this one flares to center, handled by Aparicio? It just came into play this half of the inning, and it's a one, two, three for Jose Castillo. Takes us to the eighth inning with a. Venezuela team leading by four. Sunday on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series goes west to Las Vegas. Will Brad Kozlowski hit the jackpot again, or will Jimmy Johnson take another checkered flag? Find out at the NASCAR Cup Series from Las Vegas, Sunday at 2 Central, only on Fox. Boy, you did that well. Thanks, but I got into that one. Man, I like it. Yeah, you like the, you like the uh, <laughs> NASCAR stuff. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a fan of NASCAR, although I will tell you this, it's a bucket list item. I went to one. It wasn't on my bucket list, but I will say that you should put it on yours if you've never been to a race. I went to one in Atlanta. I was like, this is going to be super boring, watching guys drive around in circles. It was fantastic. It was exhilarating. you got to do it at least once. It's a, and it's a great place that people watch. Well, I'm, Some yeah. interesting fans in NASCAR. They're into it. They love it. Yeah. So do and it at least huge, once. they're huge, huge crowds, right? Yes. I mean, it's just enormous yes. Crowds. All right, well... R.J. Alvarez on to pitch, taking over for Wesley Wright, who went two scoreless, allowed one hit, struck out two. Very good outing for the left-hander. And now Alvarez, see last year, 23 games, earned run average of seven. Jose Altuve. Nice for Team Venezuela to be able to kind of pull him off the bench <laughs> in the eighth <laughs> inning, just in case, you know. That's how deep the infield is here. Right. And the other thing, I mean, listen, as Drupal Cabrera got left off this roster, there was a little bit of controversy uh, surrounding that, but still a very good big leaguer. But that's how crowded the infield is here with Team Venezuela. Altuve will be their starting second baseman. He'll probably be their leadoff hitter tomorrow when they begin play in Pool D of the World Baseball Classic. But today, stepping aside a little bit, letting Rudy Odor play against his team in this exhibition. And Alvarez fires one right in there for a strike. One and two the count. Yeah, the idea of him getting, I guess, an at-bat in this game, kind of staying sharp, important as they head into their WBC play that starts tomorrow in Mexico. They're going to be playing Team Puerto Rico. And, you know, some guys just don't like having a full day off, and so seeing live pitching and some good live pitching right here from Alvarez is certainly probably something for Jose Altuve that he feels keeps him sharp and ready. Really not a great position on that on that swing. Maybe fooled a little bit, but able to get a piece of it and keep the at-bat going. And Ranger fans don't want to hear too much about Jose Altuve and how good he was, but you see right there the numbers, the 24 home runs. Far and away a career high for him. He had 15 the year before, which was a career high, and some changes to his swing. As good as he has been, standing up a little bit straighter. We saw him driving the ball uh, to right field like we had never seen before with some authority. Drives this ball pretty well to center field. Delano DeShields is back, takes this one 
off the base of the wall. Altuve will cruise to second base with a leadoff double in the eighth inning. And that was it right there. And this is something we did not see from Jose Altuve earlier in his career where he could drive this kind of ball to center field to right center in a ball that was up. And you mentioned it earlier the swing on the slider right looked a little bit uncomfortable looked out front. But then he got a pitch he can handle and he smoked it to dead center. Now I'm not sure that that's a play that that Delano necessarily makes or that you could expect a center fielder to make but he it did look like he lost it there for a moment in the sun and that made it a little tougher. I mean there was room I mean, had he gotten back to the right spot there on the warning track and he has the speed to do that. There, there's a chance he could have made the play. But I think I think he had a little trouble finding it there for a moment. It's not easy playing in these conditions. Outfielders will tell you it's really bright. You're used to playing with the much bigger stadiums, right? So the balls are getting to the sky a lot earlier because obviously the stadium is a lot smaller than any big league stadium. He's going to play and also the ball was well struck and outfielders will tell you the hardest ball to get a read on is the hard hit ball that's right at you and really gauging the depth of that ball and that's probably part of what Delino was dealing with there. Bell smashes one down to third and is retired easily for the first out of the inning. Jose Altuve able to move up another link though and now 90 feet away. And here comes Rugnet Odor. Well, we were talking about it earlier, the great history of shortstops in the history of Venezuela baseball. But really, maybe kind of a renaissance of sorts now for, for second baseman from Venezuela. With a man down at third, this guy at the plate. Infield is all in tight and a shift on as well for Rugnet. I think that's pretty comfortable. Playing on the grass, good left-handed hitter, right? Hitting the ball hard today, swung the bat well. So you have that heavy shift to the right side. There's not a lot of reaction time if he hits the ball hard. Obviously, they have him shifted all the way. Three infielders on the right side with the idea. If he hits it on the ground, don't want that ball to get through and try to prevent the run. It cannot be a comfortable position for especially the first baseman and your second baseman that are closest, knowing how hard Rudin Odor hits the baseball. Well, I think it introduces another challenge as well for, for the infielders, which is, you know, you, you're calibrated to know where that other guy is and how hard you can go one direction mm -hmm. or the other. And I feel like in these spots, it's got to come right to you. That's it. Because you run the, there's just a, a moment's hesitation thinking about that guy who's unnaturally close to you. Is he going for it? Sure. And you have the deal, too, where, okay, if the ball is hit slow, Jose Altuve is likely going to score. He's going to go on contact. If it's his hard, it's just a reactionary play. But say in the case of James Lone, who's a really good first baseman, he's done a really nice job. If, say, a slow ball is hit to his right, knowing that there's going to be no play at home, especially for him as a lefty, now it's making sure you're getting back and covering first base and not going for that ball because that's going to be a pretty tough play for R.J. Alvarez to get over in time. Uh, all those things kind of come into play with these new shifts. There's, there's new reactions guys had to have according to how the ball is hit. Alvarez races it past Odor for strike three. So, two outs, and now that infield can relax. I think a little bit of fun trash talking as you see RJ kind of smiling there. And Rookie said something to him after the fact, but this is a well located changeup. Look at the movement on that pitch at the end and the depth. Starts out a strike, finishes out a ball, perfectly executed, righty on lefty. You see him out front. Door had something to say back to his teammate. Alfred is still processing it. A little <laughs> smile on his face. As he now deals with Solarte. And pump strike one right in there. Solarte came in last inning defensively. See 15 home runs with the Padres last year. A lot of depth on this Venezuela team. That's one and one. Again, we mentioned they they start play tomorrow in Pool D. Italy, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and Venezuela. Now the United States will begin play in Pool C. They'll be down at Marlins Park in Miami. It's the United States, Dominican Republic, Colombia, and Canada in that pool play. One one. Ball's hammered into right field. Base hit for Solarte. Altuve will touch the plate, and it is six to one, Venezuela.
Outside of the second inning so far here for the Texas Rangers, they have been perfect up now until the eighth inning. All five of those runs came in the second inning. They had one here now in the eighth, but this has actually been a very well pitched baseball game by the Texas Rangers. That sound that we heard, that was a hard base hit. We were hearing a lot of that in that yep. second inning. They were squaring the baseball up pretty well. Yep. Hernan Perez, and, and he's had a busy day down at first base, and he watches strike one here. He's had a good day at the plate, too. Two for three. With the single, the double, you see the RBI run scored, so very productive day. Two out here in the eighth inning. Slow roller, second base, Altman on top of it. And that ends the inning. Venezuela settles for a run, and they work with the five-run lead. Well, the Fox Sports family lost a true legend this week. Bill Webb, our lead baseball director, passed away due to cancer complications. Bill leaves behind his wife, Cindy, as well as children, Matt, Aaron, and Samantha. We mourn our loss, but pay tribute to a great man and a phenomenal career. Nine seven two, Rangers, and it is the bottom of the eighth inning here. With the Texas Rangers trailing Team Venezuela by a score of six to one, and Emily Jones is down there with a familiar face in yeah. a not so familiar uniform. A very familiar face in a very strange jersey. Not strange for you, Rugnet Odor, representing your country, Team Venezuela. What is that honor like for you? I mean, this is an honor for me to play for for my country, Venezuela. I mean. I'm so proud to be in this team and play around these guys. They've been in the, in the league for a long time. And, I mean, I feel great to play with this team. Is it strange at all to go up against your teammates here today? I mean, it was pretty fun. I mean, you know, play against my, my team is a little weird, too. I mean, I miss my team, but, I mean, I just, I'm just going to go play in the WBC and come back to my team. Lots of familiar faces. Robinson Chirinos, uh, also Martin Perez, and your uncle is a coach on this team. What's it like for you to be able to play with him? I mean, it's an honor, too. I mean, I never we, I never played with my with my uncle before in the same team. And, I mean, it's a really, I feel really, really happy about this. And I mean, I'm just going to enjoy it this time. I noticed some chirping between you and Alvarez after that last at bat. You want to share? <laughs> Yeah, he told me about time I struck you out. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Ruggie, I wanted to ask you about, I heard that Robinson addressed the team and that 
his message was very heartfelt and very well received. Can you share with us a little bit about what Robinson said to you guys as a group? I mean, Robinson, you know, he's a great, really good guy. I mean, good teammate, and we, we we're talking in the clubhouse, like, let's play hard, let's play the game right and do our best, and let's see what we do. Well, Ruggie, we will miss you during spring training, but uh, we're proud of you for representing your country, and we'll, we'll see you very soon. Thank you so much. We'll send it back now to you guys. All right, thanks, Emily. Yeah, pretty cool. It's going to have a lot of fun. And they should, I'll tell you what, this team looks like a team that could uh, make some noise. Offensively, I think, without a doubt, it's a matter of how much King Felix will pitch, Martin Perez, how much you can use those guys and really lean on those guys. But without question, this is a roster that goes really deep with qualified big leaguers. They're going to score some runs. It's just a matter of preventing runs against the opposing offenses that they run into, I think, will ultimately dictate how far they go in the WBC. Well, Snyder reached with a base hit, and now James Loney jumps ahead 2 0. Loney came in the ball game uh, middle innings defensively. Yeah, we had that event the other night. I had an opportunity to talk to Robinson Chirinos and, and Ruggie uh, Martin Perez in front of a bigger crowd. And I asked them, I said, if there's one team, obviously you want to win the whole thing. Bouncer short, but the second one, and just like that, the leadoff hit is erased. 6 4 3 double play. And I said, what's the. Who's the one country that you really want to beat? No matter what, head to head, you want to beat these guys. Nobody answered. They kind of danced around a little bit. I think I know the answer. I'm pretty sure it's the Dominican Republic, uh, which they, you know, will not see. Obviously, they can advance to see them later. But they didn't want to. I don't think they wanted to put that one out there on record necessarily <laughs> in front of uh, everybody that was at the event uh, the other night. Because we see it. We see the rivalries between countries and the excitement it exists. We saw it uh, second WBC between Korea and Japan. And what a big deal was that's a rivalry that runs deep. When you think about the history of those countries, that's a big deal. Um, but without a doubt, I got to believe. Even I couldn't get an answer out of anybody. Right. The team's Venezuela would love to uh, love to take it to the Dominican. Josh Morgan takes the ball. One and one the count. Well, see, this is the fourth WBC. The first one won by Japan in 2006. They won again in 2009. And then finally it was the Dominican in 2013 to unseat the Japanese and take the title. Of course, now theirs to defend. Venezuela, no doubt, will want to have something to say about that. And I think there's, a, there's some pressure this year on the Americans to you know, represent maybe with a little little greater uh, success rate than they have in the past. Now they've played 20, I think the Americans have played a total of 20 games in the previous World Baseball Classics and they've gone to a 10 and 10 record. I think they feel like it's time to you know, start start winning some more some more games. I would agree. I mean, we see this, right? We don't get our best always. And that's and it's like that for every country, but especially I think here in the States and and some guys with bigger contracts, and you know, David Price or Mike Trout, right? these are guys that you would love to see. If we put our absolute you know, best 25 guys out there, I think we'd see a much different record. 2-2 two -two pitch, and it's full count. What I love about the WBC is the matchups that you get. So we talked about Venezuela. The Dominican's going to have a great lineup as well. Jose Batista, Nelson Cruz, Starling Marte, uh, Gregory Polanco. Those are really good, really good hitters going to be on that team. But they're going to face in the first round. MLB Network analyst Ryan Dempster. That's going to yes. be better today. <laughs> That's going to be fun to watch. That is going to be something. 4-3 put out ends the Rangers' threat in the eighth. It's still a five-run lead for Venezuela.
is the most flexible way to enjoy the 2017 Rangers season. Choose the 20 games that work best for your schedule, including opening day. You can make it to one of the games, no problem. Your 20 game plan includes a flexible exchange policy. For all the details and benefits, visit TexasRangers.com slash 20 game plans. And we go now to top of the ninth inning with Team Venezuela leading the Rangers 6-1. to one. Well, yeah, and Preston Claiborne coming on to pitch. Claiborne. We've seen him pitch already in some A games. Jesus Flores is going to lead things off for Venezuela. And here you go. <laughs> you talk about other things you'll see. And we were, we were joking earlier about uh, Ryan we saw a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Jesus Flores, not on the Venezuela roster, and he's not out of the Rangers camp. He's the bullpen catcher for Venezuela. <laughs> They're out of catching. He came in a little bit ago to uh, to do some catching for Chirinos, and now and he almost launched one. Now the bullpen catcher is going to get a little time. Yeah, and he just turned on a fastball in. Yeah, and he may find himself on the active roster before it's all said and done. Just miss. Playboard. So Count he's obviously two. not the bullpen catcher in the sense of most of the bullpen catchers that we know. There are a handful that played professionally, but most oh, have sure. not. But based on what we've seen so far after two pitches, I'd say well, that looked a little bit more like a bullpen catcher. <laughs> little tapper back to Claiborne, and that is out number one. Last active back in 2012 with the Washington Nationals. I should say in the big leagues. Perfect. Washington Nationals. Three big league home runs under his belt. Huh? There we go. A short, brilliant run here in 2017. Claiborne, incidentally, local guy, born in Dallas, lives in Carroll. He's right into the strike zone again. Now, he, he spent some time in the big leagues with the Yankees in 2013 and 14. Was injured all of 2015 and came back last year. In fact, started last year the, as a non-roster invitee with the Marlins and then signed by the Giants as a minor league free agent a little bit later and then spent some time in Richmond. His 0-2 pitch was very high. On the count one and two. Hernandez sends this one down the third baseline. Foul. He came in to play shortstop a couple innings ago. And again, this one, you know, an exhibition. This is the home facility, <laughs> training facility for Team Venezuela. And they have shared some players with the Rangers and the Royals when needed. Jonathan Hernandez. From Yanni Hernandez from the minor league side, and this one fouled off. One and two the count. Claiborne, guy with some big league time, he comes back and is healthy. Another guy who has a chance, you know, kind of being an under the radar acquisition in the offseason, who, who could have an impact during the regular season. Claiborne's one two. And a bat here by Hernandez. You see that foul ball go down the line. One of the new rules that's going to be in place in the 2017 season. The coaches have to be in that box, or at least they can be where they are now, but they can't come any further up. Where sometimes we see third base and first base coaches kind of all over the place a little bit, but they're going to be a little more strict about that during the season this year. Claiborne freezes Hernandez with strike three. And that is the second out of the inning. There you see, you're fine deep, right? You can drift back all you want. That's where I'd prefer to stand. I mean, you think about, you know, it's just the craziness of being so close to how hard uh, these guys hit the baseball. But it was just more of a matter of some guys uh, being up too close. And you worry about people worry about things like sign stealing, or especially if you have a runner on second base a lot of times, the third base coach will come down uh, and be able to get a little bit of a better angle, all the different things that will happen. But uh, not this year. There's some changes. Every year, a couple of tweaks here and there to 
help improve the game. And a lot of times, or at least we've seen recently, let's say the last five, ten years, some of those changes have been with safety in mind. Count one and one. Without a doubt, the collisions at home plate, sure. obviously a big one that really got put on the map when Buster Posey got hurt. Uh, not that it happened a bunch before that, but that's really kind of the one I think that it set off the alarms a little bit. And then, of course, you have the plays at second base that got instituted last year as far as taking guys out. That changed a little bit, which is probably better for the game, I think, to some degree. We certainly don't want to see anybody get hurt, but you go back to you know, Jung Ho Gong and what happened with sure. Ruben Tejada. But, you know, Jung Ho. It wasn't a, it wasn't really a bad slide a lot of people got upset I wrote about it a couple years ago when it happened but he just did it you know he coming from Korea they don't they don't ever take guys out when they slide and so it's a little bit of a different culture feel and for guys when they come over here from different countries in that situation they don't jump out of the way I don't remember um, the the middle infielder that the twins had a couple of years ago I think it was back 2013 uh, Suyoshi and Nick Swisher slid in broke his leg first year that he played in the States because they're just not used to jumping out of the way they just, you know, because guys of those countries don't take guys out on double plays. And it was unfortunate to see a couple of our Asian middle infielders sustain some pretty big injuries. Miguel Aparicio strikes out swinging, and it's a quiet top of the ninth. Last chance for the Rangers coming up, and they need him out a big rally. When we come back. Surprise, Arizona, with the Rangers trailing Team Venezuela by a score of 6-1. to one. Fans, Texas Rangers spring training baseball is always live with MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. And that is not an exaggeration as we see a couple of fans checking out the MLB at bat app or Dave Rangers Twitter feed, one of the two. Or quite possibly neither. <laughs> but I will tell you this, I don't say this because we're, you know, working in an MLB booth. That app is off the charts outstanding. The best in all sports. I have it open right now. I use it all the time. Even the WBC scores right in there yeah. as well. I got a little guy who is addicted to that app. Absolutely loves it. Dad, can I use your phone? But nine years I just want to look at the MLB at bat. Can I have your phone? Can I have your phone? It is uh, fantastic. MLB does a great job with their it app. It is. It's uh it's changed the way a lot of uh People do all sorts of things now on the internet, businesses and <laughs> individuals. I mean, really, it's, it's it's tweaked everything. And that guy, he likes a really big phone. Can't get that in your pocket. No. Big phone would be great if you put that up to his ear and <laughs> started talking to somebody. What? Can't hear you. Big phone. Big phone. <laughs> Speak up. Well, here we go. Bottom of the ninth inning. And I was hoping this would happen. Alianjel Lopez has come on to pitch for Venezuela. And you'll notice when you see him here, Pueyo getting his first at bat of the day. Lopez wearing the Venezuelan jersey. It's Pueyo. There's a fly ball out to left field. Sanchez waits and he makes the play one away. But you'll notice that Lopez, he 
he's wearing the Venezuelan jersey and he's wearing a Rangers <laughs> hat. <laughs> and as he faces the Rangers. And he also he's got a beautiful name, Aliangel, but he goes by Frank. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? He doesn't go. Are you being serious? He goes by Frank. Oh, I thought you were joking. No. That is a beautiful name. It's you, a beautiful name. And you make it sound so beautiful as well, I think, as part of it. And he runs this one inside for ball one. That's the type of thing, as a parent, right, you, you got to respect your child's choice, your ability to do whatever you want. It's your name. It's your life. I named you Alianem because I think it's, it's beautiful. It's I'm with you. Yeah, I would... I, yeah, but mom, I want to go by Frank. I'd probably be a little upset. I'd probably be a little upset about that. I remember about fifth grade, I came home with a, a paper from school where I wrote Dave on it. Doggy's mom read me the right act on that one. Really? Yeah. Got out my birth certificate. Oh. See what your name is right here, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so say, I didn't name you Dave. <laughs> well, it's time to be cool. So we gotta... Yeah. Sorry, mom. Just trying to fit in. Right, LaRude waiting. The one two pitch. Maybe he'll get another one. Probably could work through some of these issues. Just been festering for all these years. <laughs> 6 1 Venezuela. My dad was like that uh, when anybody called me Chris. My first full name is Christopher. I was CJ my whole life. I always have been. He wasn't having it with the Chris. <laughs> wasn't a fan. This one fouled off by LaRude. Count stays one and two. So Frank Lopez, 6'1", 200 pounds, a left-hander. He is from Venezuela. 23 years old. Last year, spent the season in Frisco. He went five and six, made 14 starts and 11 appearances out of the bullpen. Has earned an average 5.28. I think it is important to notice we talked about we got the Andrew Kasher news today Emily reported on it uh, earlier in the broadcast and having a little bit of setback now wondering about that timetable of his availability to start the season and people starting to wonder what's going to happen with the Rangers do they need to look outside the organization uh, you know, trying to add now it looks like two people two spots that are going to be uh, a competition right now uh, in spring training like it was just going to be one but Dylan G threw the ball well today you know he's not on this list right now Castro we're going to you know assume that he's not going to be ready for opening day Nick Martinez and the others on that list um, but the idea potentially uh, uh, you know I think Dylan G's kind of saying hey you know, take notice of what I did. He threw the ball really well. Today. It was quiet, right? It was just in and out, quiet, weak contact. Uh, did a fantastic job. Chi Chi struggled a little bit today in that second inning, some hard contact. You start to wonder if he can sneak in there a little bit. I think it's 14 or six. I think it was 14 starts last year that he had. Um, he's had some good years in the past. You just start to wonder if maybe he can find his way uh, you know, a little bit more into the competition than maybe he was before the day started. Yeah, I think there, there is some depth at that position, depending on, on what direction the Rangers want to go, but there are still names out there, guys available, including names uh, the Rangers are very familiar with, guys like Colby Lewis. So it's not to say that those types of things aren't, you know, a real possibility. And there's a walk and to LaRue. You know, certainly know that Colby was disappointed that it didn't work out uh, to come back, but you never know the situations change a little bit. And just on the surface, it does seem like that would be a pretty good fit right now. Certainly, Ranger fans would love to see him back in this uniform. He's meant a lot to this organization, what he has done when he's put on that Ranger uniform. I was with him the first time around before he went to Japan. He and I played together here, and it was a, a lot of hype and a lot of high expectations. Didn't work out in the beginning. For him, was, right? Yeah, for him. Yeah, no, for, for, there was never right. People know better than that um, <laughs> for me. But, yeah, so then goes to Japan, right? Kind of a rebirth, comes back, and it was just fantastic. So good in the postseason here. I gotta believe it's pretty tempting to pick up that phone and kind of check in and see where he is. And this is pure speculation. I'm not talking for anybody in the front office or anything like that. But Kobe Lewis is certainly a name uh, that could come up. Edwin Jackson was here. I think he had a workout not too long ago. And he kind of went so-so as far as what free agent pitchers are still out there. Doug Fister is a name uh, that is out there. I'm sure. I gotta believe the Rangers might want to check in with him. But there may be an addition from the outside potentially now uh, with Andrew Kashner at least sounding like nothing official, but. Seems pretty borderline on whether or not he'd actually be ready to start the year. Big lead at first for LaRue. Nobody holding him as Altman watches another one inside. And it's 3-0. and oh. Josh Altman getting his first at bat of the afternoon. And so uh, let's go to the real source on this thing. 
Emily, what do you got? Well, it's been a few weeks since I've talked to Colby, but the last time I spoke with him, his intentions were to stay in shape should a situation arise, whether it be with the Rangers or anywhere else that, you know, might call him into action. So he was going to continue to work out, uh, throw, try to get himself ready as much as he could um, on his own without being in a in a camp of any sort and so that was his intent a few weeks ago like I said I have not spoken to him recently but that was um, was his plan going into the spring was to try to kind of keep up with what he would be doing if he were in a camp okay a good idea obviously I mean makes all kinds of sense the three one and that one out of the dirt foul and you know I would deliver the news uh, on Kashner today, and it was not great news, the setback that, that puts into question uh, his ability to be ready by opening day. Tyson Ross continues to progress nicely. Uh, the reports every day seem to be encouraging, whether it's throwing from a bullpen or uh, whatever the case. He continues to just take the program one day at a time, and all reports uh, continue to come back very good. Altman watches ball four. In fact, I talked to Doug Brocale a, a couple of days ago now uh, about his experience with Tyson Ross in this camp. He said, you know, I, Ross didn't know I was there. I was I was kind of peeking around the corner watching mm -hmm. him throw off the half mound. So he told me that he was going 60%. He said, brother, if that was 60%, <laughs> <laughs> he said, the, the, we're really onto something here. So yes. he was very impressed with what he has seen from Ross so far and I think the concern is always when you have guys coming back from injury is can you can you rein them in long enough that they can get themselves fully back to 100 percent the smart play for me is the slow play with him because I think ideally just call it May 1st so you get it back around that time you can get five months out of him and postseason right this is a team sure. that absolutely expects to be uh, in the postseason I would take that over maybe pushing it too hard and trying to get it back earlier uh, based on the news that we got on Andrew Kashner today now he was Tyson Ross was scheduled to throw around 20 pitches today fastball changeup off the full mound that'll be kind of the first I think real test for listen there's each test that you go along but that's a big one when you're talking about being on a full size mound and, and working on that fastball changeup so uh, we will see as long as he doesn't have any setbacks. And like you said, should they be careful with anybody coming back from injury? He will be a huge addition from within. Get back to where he was two years ago. He was pretty dominant. Did it quietly in San Diego. But yes, that would be uh, that would be a big boost to this rotation. Meanwhile, this uh, this ninth inning comeback is starting to take shape. Couple of men on with one out. And Drew Robinson who hits a ball hard out to right field. Bell coming on into a dive that makes a really nice play. Robinson robbed. And there are two away. Now one out left in this one for the Rangers. And again, the story today for them, offense continues to struggle. That doesn't help. Larue at second, Altman at first. Delano to Shields. He flew out to right field in the seventh inning. Oh, for one today. Rangers run. Came on the homer in the second by Ryan Rua. Just two other hits. Bye, the weird part of it, the Rangers have had multiple base runners in a lot of innings. The uh, Venezuela's gotten away with a handful of walks, hit batters today. Especially in that first inning, right? Two runners on with just one out after the hit by pitch and the walk. Uh, they were unable to capitalize, put a little bit of pressure on Will Desba back in that first inning, but you're right. There's been some opportunities, not a ton, but there have been some opportunities. This one slices into right field, base hit for Delano De Shields. Root stops at third. Base is loaded now with two away. So the inning continues. And LaRue, I think, in the under normal situation, probably trying to score there. But when you're down by five runs, his run doesn't mean much of anything. But watch Delano, a really nice job. It's a backdoor breaking ball. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Squares it up. Hits it the other way. 
That's a pitch as a lefty that you're hoping that righty's going to pull off of or take it for a called strike, a backdoor breaking ball. But he stayed on it. Did a good job hitting that ball to the other way. So Will Middlebrooks, he got up in the seventh inning and a fly ball to center field. All for one today. This should be a good matchup for him. Right? You got a low angle, kind of sidearm lefty, staying away, away, away. The only time you get in trouble, again, is if you start to try to pull because it's not high velocity. It's a lot of times, like, you know, I did toward the end of my career, I was throwing sidearm, not throwing hard. The best thing that could happen is righties that got pull happy because you have really good movement, good change of speeds. Everything's usually on the outside half of the plate. Anytime a righty got pull happy or started to get too big with a swing, it played right into your hand. So for Will Middlebrooks, you should be kind of looking middle away. Strike one. Let me let him have that one. That one, and he's not going to do it three times, right? Does that to kind of keep you honest, but that's not the pitch he wants. Lopez working in relief for Team Venezuela. Final league side, the Rangers camp. After this one, Venezuela makes her way to Mexico and pool play beginning tomorrow. Three one. Middlebrooks hammers that ball down the third baseline. Fair ball gets Larue to the plate. Altman will score as well. And here comes Delano to shield. So a three-run double by Will Middlebrooks. Well, makes it a six to four ball game and gets a tying run to the plate. We give Will Middlebrooks a lot of credit. The patience that he showed through that at bat. The first pitch fastball just off the plate. If you're an over-anxious hitter trying to drive some runs in. You might pull off that ball, but he waits and he gets himself in a really nice count. And this is just a breaking ball that's sitting right over the middle of the play. You have a 3-1 count as a lefty with the base load. You're trying to throw a strike. So you're not going to try to bury that pitch and down and in. Just flip it over there for a strike. And Will Middlebrooks does a really nice job of squaring that one up. So Frank Lopez is done today as Venezuela goes into the bullpen. Kind of an interesting game here with one out to go. Bottom of the ninth. Clearing double out there at second, and Travis Snyder at the plate. And he'll take a curveball from Felix Carvalho. Left hander. It's unsubstantiated, mind you, but rumors nickname is Queso. Nice. Which is, uh, if it isn't the case, then it should be. Yeah, well. Be his nickname. If you're going to get the queso nickname, you got to fastball's got to be pretty good. Got to be 95 plus, especially this day in age where we get so many great fastballs. It could be only one cheese. It better be 
near the top. Snyder off the handle, pops it up third base side, and that does it as Solarte tracks it down, and Queso gets it done. Rangers have to settle for three ninth inning runs, but falls short six to four. Our final score today, Omar Vizquel and Venezuela heads off to pool play. Well, it was a fun one this afternoon for C.J. Nikowski, Emily Jones, and our entire crew. I'm Dave Raymond. So long from Surprise, Arizona. An invitation to join us Saturday, 2 o'clock Central. The Rangers host the Chicago White Sox on TXA 21. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports Southwest. Once again, our final score from Surprise, Venezuela 6, the Rangers 4.